Okay. Hello, hello. Hello. Whew. Hello. <laughs> hello, everyone. The music everyone. is so lovely. I, I was kind of upset that you had to uh, to turn it off. <laughs> uh, well, the music is still playing, uh, at least for those on stream. For the folks in chat, the music is still playing. It's just uh, it's just quieter now. <laughs> but, um, but no, it's a, it's a pleasure to see y'all, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming out to the first and probably not last uh, Blender Instructional. Um, this one will be sort of higher level introduction to the program, to basic modeling, a little bit, bit of environmental design, some node work, some shading work, uh, the essential modifiers, everything like that. Um, also alongside this, uh, we're doing a bit of a fundraiser for Myself, <laughs> technically, uh, I have some unforeseen medical expenses that I've had a lot of trouble covering recently. Um, so we've had the fantastic idea of, while well, I do this instructional, there's some fun ways. I'm aware you can't see who's talking. That's because the uh, the cover art is still up. Um, that's why it's currently just me. But, uh... Uh, words. Um... 
you can donate to the Kofi link that is on screen. And when you donate, uh, first off, if you donate, huge thank you. Uh, your support means a million. Um, and if you do donate, then you can ask a question about a modifier or technique or approach or any question about Blender whatsoever. And in my explaining what that is or how to use it, I am then required to integrate it into the project that we're making currently. Uh, even if it's a bit weird for it. So we shall this see. This could go horribly wrong. <laughs> this could go <laughs> horribly certain, wrong. Certain degrees of weird <laughs> is not allowed, I suppose. But, uh... um, so with that, uh, everyone, you can see in the description of the video that you can download Blender. It is completely free. You can get the latest copy of 2.93 uh point three i'm actually on 2.93.0 just because i haven't updated mine but they're completely identical um there were just some very minor bug fixes on uh, 2.93.3 um okay so i'll let everyone download that for a moment i'll go ahead and switch us over to uh our actual live view you can see everyone we have on the call we have ashley nichols art uh the lead team rabbit um oh, wow. we we have Fable and Call, lead team Dinosaur. We have Tracy, uh, team lead Gremlin. And we have me, uh, team lead Amphibian. So we have the entire Animal Kingdom yeah. here today. Yeah, speaking yeah. of the entire Animal Kingdom, if you hear some squawking, uh, my parrots have decided that now is a good time for Scream. Although that one scream, that was that was me. I blame myself. Don't blame Dom. <laughs> Um, Anon, <laughs> this video will not be available for, for purchase. It will be available completely free on the YouTube channel DVR, like, ready to go. Um, yep. it is not pay to play. It is just pay to support. Uh, yes. and if you do, right. I it's, greatly, greatly It's a voluntary it. thing, but I absolutely yeah. recommend, uh, giving you to hand here. He's, uh, yes. he's done, he does amazing stuff. And, uh, he's going to offer him a bug and a, a mist in his terrarium, um, yeah. And he needs yes, yeah, and a nice. You have to keep his skin moist. A nice rock, a slippery yes, rock, and for a warm lamp. Out. Yes, <laughs> it's the <a> moss. Um, <laughs> yeah, so and like a backdrop that's like Hawaiian. <laughs> like oh. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Uh, we have immediate Kofi from Fetch. Thank you, Han. Uh, and from someone. I don't know if your name is someone or if that's anonymous. I don't know how Kofi lists anonymous donations. Um, and from Joko Musical, thank you. Okay, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Also make sure to, um, when you donate, you can include a message. Uh, if you have a message, make sure to include it with that. Wait, son of a bitch. Ashley, son of a bitch. Oh, huh? what? <laughs> what? What? Ashley Nichols Art, $300. Bunnies rule, newts drool. Or slime? Yeah, yeah, slime. Okay, okay. I see how it is. We're gonna, we're gonna pull this card out again. I see. Can, who's, can this, who's this? Who's this Ashley bitch? I don't fucking... <laughs> huh? Oh, God. <laughs> Um, but thank but you. But yeah, bunnies uh, are superior. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, chat will prove her wrong later. Um, Excuse and... you! <laughs> um, in the meantime, uh, so for folks who are following along at home, I will be going very slow. I'll be explaining all of the buttons and hotkeys as I use them. We'll be going as if you have never opened Blender in your life before. So you can go ahead, open Blender up, you can follow all the way along. We will not be smiting the default cube. The default cube will be basically the only mesh we work with today. Um, we will extrapolate everything from him, or we might do a default cylinder, depending on how I'm feeling. Um, okay, so when you first open Blender, uh, don't be panicked at the UI. You're seeing exactly what you'll see on your screen. You have the splash screen here. It's very Photoshoppy kind of. It gives you a handful of basic files you can open. We're just going to start with general, clicking on the top left button. And that will give you this. The, I don't understand Lackadaisy movie trying to reload universe or not. I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, <laughs> also, people uh, have acknowledged that you have just reignited the war, Ashley. Um, <laughs> so, 
You know, we're going to select everything with the letter A on our keyboard, similar to Control A in various word processors or Photoshop uh, and various Adobe programs. We're going to hold Shift, and we're going to click our cube so we don't delete him. And we're just going to delete everything from the scene. Oh, we have another donation from Cron121. Thank you, Cron. Kofi, how are we going to load? Kofi's thinking about its life choices. Okay, so we're actually going to... So how do you make procedural scales in the node editor if you got time? Procedural scales in the node editor. Oh, interesting. Okay, okay. Be, we'll yeah. I'll think about how to include that. Um, we are... I, mean, I, first... I would assume it involved the geometry <laughs> node, if anything. Uh, we could do the geometry node. Um, there's something similar. I was trying to make, like, a mystique shader a while back. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, so let's see. First, we're going to set up the scene a little bit. So on the right side of your screen, you will have your layers panel. Uh, it's actually called your properties panel. Um... It's up here in the top right of your screen. It's very similar to Photoshop, so as you add things, they will be organized in view layer, top to bottom, being top visible to lower visible. There's the little eyeball, so you can uh, change visibility and everything. There's the camera, which you can click to turn off, on and off visibility in renders, so on and so forth. We'll get more into that in a moment. Below that menu, sorry, this is your layer view. This is your properties panel. Sorry, I'm scatterbrained. Your properties panel, also, is it not? Okay, it is picking up my cursor, good. So below your layer view, you have your properties panel. This is the tall row of vertical, very colorfully labeled buttons. We're going to go to our render properties, which is that second button under the screwdriver and wrench. It looks like a little camera facing away from you. We're going to turn on ambient occlusion, We're going to turn on bloom, gonna turn on screen space reflections just by clicking that little checkbox next to them to check the blue box. Uh, we're gonna crank. So if you click on the word ambient occlusion or the little arrow next to it, opens a drop down. We're gonna ho go ahead and increase that to about 10 meters. That's usually what I recommend for basically any file where you want to get a bit of realism going on. Uh, bloom, we'll keep that the same. Screen space reflection. If you have a decent computer, turn on refraction. Um, gets a bit fancier stuff in there. Let's see. Below that, we have our render settings or output properties rather. Uh, we'll just stay at 1920 by 1080. I do have a 4K system and whatnot. We could go 4K if you want to get nuts with it, but we're not going to open that can of worms. Um, especially because some people who are participating might have lower end systems. Speaking of, if you do have not a great system, uh, and yes, we are rendering with Eevee as opposed to Cycles. Eevee is real time. Cycles has to process each frame. But Cycles is better for hyper-realism, uh, but Eevee is definitely getting up there. Um, if you do want to lower the render resolution to speed up your renders by the end of this, you can change this percentage slider here. So, for example, we're at 19 by 20 by 1080. If I were to make this 200%, we'd be at 4K. New donation from an on from from an on from stream smiley face. How do I? Thank you so much for the tutorial. Oh, but thank you for being here. Or, I, well, I, you are missing it, but thank you. In the future, thank you for being here, uh, uh, Phoebe. Um, okay, so we're going to stick at 100%. So let's see. We're going to take our default cube. We're going to right-click it, and it brings up the object context menu. We're going to hit Shade Smooth, which if we go to Material Preview, you can see there's, like, some weird glow on the edges. Because when you shade smooth on a hard edge in Blender, by default, it it's not great. So we're going to go there. Then on our object property, or not our object properties, our properties panel, on the right side again, all those colorful buttons. Uh, there's the white buttons, the orange button, the blue buttons, and then there's the green triangle at the bottom. This is your object data properties. We're going to drop down normals, and we're going to click auto smooth. And that should help that out a little bit. Then from there, we're going to fix up our scene. So first we're going to... You you can resize all of your, uh, your panels by just grabbing their edge and dragging them out. So I'm just going to drag up the bottom a little bit. 
gonna go to the top left corner where you can change what the menu is. So for example, on our 3D scene, we could change this to the timeline or we can change it back to the 3D viewport or whatever scene we want to use. So we're going to change this bottom one to the shader editor. And we're not actually going to mess with the shader on the cube just yet. We're going to go right next to that button. We're going to click object and we're going to change that to world. So this is, well, this is the world. This is uh, what we're messing with. So we're going to, let's see, how do we want to do this? We're going to click add and we're going to do a noise texture. Um, oh, we need the node wrangler add-on for this. Okay, so you're going to hit edit in the top left of your screen. Same where you would uh, normally find edit just with any program. You're going to hit preferences at the bottom of that menu. And this will bring up this screen here. So there's a lot going on, but don't panic. Make sure you click the add-ons button about halfway down. And we are going to grab the node wrangler. So you can search the word node. And then right here at the bottom, click on the checkbox next to node wrangler. Just right there. And then on the bottom left, the little three bar hamburger menu, click save preferences, and then you can close. Once you've got node wrangler added, you can go back to your shader. You can click on the noise texture we added a moment ago and press left control T, and this will bring up your vector mapping. Then from there, let's crank the scale up to like 500 on the noise texture, the top value. And if I'm going too fast for anyone, I sincerely apologize. I do want <laughs> four hours while teaching the class is not a ton of time, but uh, <laughs> but I think the micro windows aren't showing. Are there edit? Let me see. Oh, preferences. The preferences menu does not show up. Okay, hopefully I explained that well enough. When you open the pre actually here, let me switch to. I'm going to change this from just capturing Blender to the whole screen so that it uh, it captures the pop-up menus and stuff when I edit. Sorry about that, folks. There we go. Okay. So now if I go edit, preferences... There you go, and you can see all of that. So we'll click on add-ons right in the center. You'll search the word node, and then you'll select node wrangler right here. You'll just check this little box. Then you'll hit the three hamburger menu in the bottom left of that screen, save preferences, and then close. Now I have our shader editor here. We selected noise texture. We pressed control T to open the texture mapper. That way we can just adjust it in a moment. Let's do a to a color ramp so we'll click add search color ramp plug factor into factor color into color into color give it a moment it's gonna look crazy for a second hey newt what? the yeah. audience was saying that they you think you couldn't capture the preferences window yeah that's what i Apparently. i just fixed that oh oh sorry about that okay no sorry. you're good okay but um Yes, Moki, I agree. Streaming applications should capture the pop-ups. Uh, I apologize that they do not. Yeah. But we did get that fixed. Um, Grave Writer asks, can I make a cake in Blender? My request is don't forget to take care of yourself. I will be ordering food in about two hours. I got you. Um, well, I say, I say ordering food in about two hours. I will probably not be ordering food. I will probably be going downstairs to make food really quick. <laughs> Um, so there we go. So if we add a color ramp, this is basically a, it's basically, it's basically a filter, a, a threshold filter for colors. So we can go ahead and slide the black slider all the way from the bottom near the top. And we start getting a bit of a star field in the top right of your viewport. By the way, this screen where like the main screen where everything is going on, this is your viewport. Oh, how to connect the boxes? Yeah, it's literally as simple as you grab the dot and you drag it to the other dot. That's it. Just drag the dot, drag it to the other dot. It's like if I disconnect these, click and drag the dot, do the other dot. 
that simple. Uh, okay, we connect the boxes. Uh, should we click and drag? Yep. So we go ahead and drag this slider up a bit. If you want to hide this grid just while we're working on the actual environment itself, in the top right of your viewport, there's these gray buttons, and some of them are clicked blue. Uncheck the show overlays. It's the two overlapped circles in the top right. Just uncheck that, and you'll see the cube is very dark right now. Don't worry about that. But you can see all of the space is very nice and easy to see. So let's get it a little bit brighter. We can go ahead and change this to constant if we want. And actually, let's slide the back black down to the end. There we go. So we've got a lot of white stars. Let's go ahead, click the add button on the color ramp. Maybe, whoop. Get a handful of neutron stars in there, something like that. <laughs> add another star. Watch out for radiation. <laughs> uh, let's get a couple of red giants scattered in there. And there we go. Now we're getting proper little space scene. Your cooking class coming up. Uh, what? Who? How did you change the bottom of the screen? Like the stuff you're connecting? Oh, okay. So, like I mentioned before, so when you open this, this is originally the timeline. It'll look about like like this. So what I did was I clicked on the top edge of it where my cursor turns into the two arrows and dragged it up so I had more workspace. I clicked on the top left button and I went to Shader Editor. Then I went next to that button just to the right and I clicked where it said Object and I changed it to World. And then that opened the World settings. And then I added a noise texture and pressed Control T to open the purple and red box here for texture mapping. Then I added a color ramp from the add button and search color ramp. It's also under add converter color ramp. And then I connected factor to factor, color to color. I cranked the noise texture up to about 500. I added some nodes to the color ramp and switched it to constant, which is next to the RGB button. And then that connected to the background makes this lovely sort of quick and dirty star field. Um, sorry, I'm just, I'm looking back and forth trying to keep up with questions. Um, if I miss anyone, I sincerely apologize. Uh, I can, uh, I can hover over it. It's fine, dude. You've done it, you've done it for me plenty of times, and I am a little bit exhausted, so the idea of just, like, playing babysitter to chat sounds appealing to me. <laughs> Fair enough. There you go. And yeah, you can adjust these. Which I should probably shift to the mod account. <laughs> And you can adjust these sliders to adjust the number of stars in the star fields. Um, we can even, if we want to get really fancy with it, spin the Z-axis real fast so we can get star streaks. Uh, we could actually do that if we want. That's the <laughs> whole reason that we pulled this out. If we just, well, it does, okay, so it doesn't show super well in the preview. If I do it slow, you can see it. But um, what we're actually we going to do- jump into hyperspace. <laughs> we're gonna click on location. Uh, on the X coordinate, we're going to do hashtag frame, and we're going to hit enter. And now if we were to hit space, the stars would just go mad. What this is doing is it changes this value based on what frame in the animation we are. So we're going to click on that again. We're going to do a forward slash for divided by, and let's do a million. Uh, yeah, let's do a million. And now, if we hit space, you won't see many changes, but you might occasionally see stars twinkling. You'll see them kind of come in and out. You'll see a refresh every 250 frames because that's all we have our timeline set to. But you'll see stars start to twinkle or whatever. It just gives the background a bit more character. Now, that should basically be our world setup. Uh, we're not going to get too crazy with it, because we do want to get back to making something. So let's go back to our 
solid view. So that's in the top right of your screen uh, where we turned off the grid a minute ago. You're gonna go to the right, there's those four circles. There's the wireframe, there's solid, material preview, and rendered view. So we're gonna go to solid view for now. And let's see, let's get making a spaceship. So, and I'm still looking at the scales thing, thinking about that. Ah, uh, you know what? Fine. We'll nuke the we'll nuke the default cube. Whoever called it, uh, <laughs> five brownie points. Um, <laughs> we'll go to top left. It's off we'll to go... default cube heaven. <laughs> um, we'll go to top left. We'll go to mesh, and we will go to cylinder, and then we will go ahead and we will press R on our key. We will press Y on our keyboard, and then we will press nine zero on our home row to change it 90 degrees and then we'll press enter we could of course you know get the rotate tool and we could like hold control to snap it you know to certain degrees or whatever and do it manually but once you get going with the key binds or whatever just going real quick is a much easier way to do it also we just got a donation i didn't even see who it was from because i wasn't paying attention the bow tie one let me let me see one. what it thank says thank you for the one tutorial second. oh thank you Good to see you thank you Are you Let's able to see. see that in... Does he include any notes? In my Kofi, are you able to see that? I can see, um, yes, I can see a list of people, like the Bowtie one, bought a coffee for Newtworks, uh, says, thank you for the tutorial. Cool, you can see yes, it. Yes, and, awesome. uh, <laughs> and yeah, and Grave had, had asked like 10 minutes ago, don't forget to eat food and drink water today. Oh, wait, you already covered that, didn't you? Because uh, they're encouraging thing? you to make a cake and blender. Yeah, uh, uh, two, engrave, two months uh, cake to me, I think, yeah. We will get to the cake. I she have an to. idea for the cake. <laughs> um, so let's see. How do we want to do... Okay, so first we will... Yeah, we'll just get a basic fuselage going. We're making a spaceship. Yep, and you, you can do a uh, shift A. So what I did, because I'm not trying to get too fancy with the keybinds, is just going to the top left of the screen, clicking add, and then I went to mesh, which is the top option. And then you have these options here. I have a few more options because I have some extra add-ons, uh, but I just went to cylinder, added a cylinder, and it generated one in the world. You can also shift A, and then you have the exact same menu. So let's get a little bit of a fuselage going. So here we'll scale this along the x-axis. So we hit, hit S for scale and then X for the x-axis. And then we can go ahead and get a little fancy with it. I am going to delete these two faces. So the way I did that, well, here I'll walk through that again, is up here you have the vertex selection, which allows you to select vertices. You have edge selection, which lets you select edges. And you have face selection, which just lets you select faces. So we're going to select that face just by clicking on it. We're going to shift, select this face. We're going to press either X or delete, either works. I usually do X and you get an option of what you want to delete and we're going to delete faces. Because when you render with flat faces, like here, if we, if I undelete those and go to rendered view just for the example, uh, we're gonna add a light, sunlight, go to render it this way you can see flat faces don't light correctly um, especially with the smooth shading on I mean it's eh but no we want to grid fill these faces so we're going to select face select face delete the faces we're going to go up here change it to edge selection then we're going to hold Alt, and we're going to click on one of the circles. And see? And it does that. And then we're going to Face, Grid Fill, and it's a little bit tilted sideways, so we're going to press up here on this little colorful, I like to call it an atom. I'm using this as opposed to the numpad, because not everyone has a numpad. And we're going to open the Grid Fill dropdown, 
If you click elsewhere on screen, then that drop down will go away. So you'll need to undo and then face da, 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 grid fill. And then we're going to change that offset just, oh, whoop. There we go. Just so it's pointed up vertically. Just because it makes working, you know, later a bit easier. Yeah, and that will render much more smoothly in the actual rendered view. It's hard to properly recall keybinds at some point. It all just turns into muscle memory. That is very true, Moki. I'm trying to <laughs> be sure that I That's kind don't... of the secret to getting good at it, honestly, is like getting muscle memory for shortcuts helps a ton. Like if you mm -hmm. can, uh, in pretty much any program, if you can avoid having to dig through the UI to get to where you need to go, like manually clicking around, if you can just like make use of shortcuts, that's how most things go fast. Truth. It's like, it's not just the knowledge of where to get to where you need, it's also knowing how to get to where you need faster. Yeah. So, yeah. So let's see, first we're gonna do a bit of an engine section. So we're going to press E to extrude. We're going to press S to scale. We're gonna scale it down a little bit. Then we're gonna press G to move. And we're gonna press Y to move, whoops. We're gonna press G to move and then X to move it on the X axis a bit. So it can get a little bit of a taper down there. Then we're going to press E to extrude again along the X axis. And we're gonna go out just a little ways. And let's do E to extrude, S to scale, go up a smidgen then G to move again X on the X axis we'll do E to extrude along the X axis so X again then E to extrude again X on the X axis and we'll scale down with S a little bit just get sort of a bit of a ridge there moved a little far so let's just do G X move it in a bit also you do not have to be making exactly what I'm making um, you can make, you know, whatever you would like alongside. Uh, let's see. Hank Sam. Sorry, just popped in. Are you guys using Blender in Lackadaisy? We use a hell of a lot of Blender in Lackadaisy. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, it, it's, it, it's like if we didn't, uh, the project would have been structured a lot differently. It helped so many things go so much faster from boarding to background painting to animation to cleanup. Like, yeah, uh, what it has been thing. heavily integrated into the pipeline. Yeah. Uh, we're if you can to... learn Blender, you can do a lot. <laughs> Here's the scale, just to get a bit of a lip. We're going to attach some, like, supports to this in a minute. Then we're going to extrude again along the x-axis, so we hit E, then X. Going to go out a little bit. Going to scale down a decent amount. Then let's get, like, a bit of an engine bell going. So let's do extrude X. We'll scale it down a little bit, not too much. Gotta hate the YouTube emotes. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I, can, I can agree, Sue. They're <laughs> not super. Uh, we'll I, I wish that they would allow <laughs> importing custom emojis, just like uh, Twitch does. Or like that Discord, would nice. that would be awesome. Yeah, then we could like fill the emoji set with uh, with lackadaisy emojis. What are the minimum specs my computer has to be to use Blender? So it kind of depends on what you want to do with it, because on the face of it, Blender is not a heavy program. Um, it's very, very feature rich, and you can make it heavy. My copy of Blender is kind of heavy, because I have a lot of stuff running, like extra add-ons and meshes and modifiers and tons of stuff uh, that don't come with the default Blender. They're all free, of course, or some of them aren't free. There are third-party ones that I have paid for. But um, we will not be using those today. But on the face of it, any computer that's come out in the last five to seven years should be just fine on a, on the latest version of Blender. <laughs> this is magic. Oh, I appreciate the, uh, I appreciate the comment, Novak. Um, oh, there we go. Moki post the uh, the official specs uh, that are recommended by the Blender team. So let's see. So we're going to go ahead and make an engine bell. So let's do an extrude, bit of a scale, G on the X. And we're going to extrude on the X a little bit further, scale it up a little bit more, 
extrude on the X, scaled up a little bit more, getting kind of a, I don't know, a nuclear engine or something. Extrude on the X, scale it up even more. That might have been a bit too far. G, X, bring it back just a little bit. Vacuum optimized nozzle, eat your heart out. Okay, so we've got that. So let's go in here. We'll alt click when we get that. We'll extrude that edge, scale it in just a bit. G, X, move it back. And then that one's small enough we can just fill it. I don't like using N-Gons, which is any shape that doesn't have four sides. Uh, and given this is a 32-sided circle because it has 32 edges. Um, but it's so small yeah, that you won't even see Typology nightmares. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's what they teach you when you first learn modeling. They're like, don't use N-Gons. You can, mm -hmm. at, at worst, uh, a Trigon, maybe. You want everything to be quads because the render engines like quads more. Everything so, else creates complications. <laughs> truth. So let's yeah. see. So we're going to look at this engine. We're going to press Control R. And this opens the loop cut mode. So this lets you basically make, well, as you can see, loop cuts at any point in the mesh uh, where there is a closed edge loop. So we're going to do a, a single loop cut here. So we're going to click, and then we're going to drag it up a little bit until these little shapes here are square-ish. So there should do. Yeah, that should do it. And then we are going to select this face and select this face. And we're going to switch to edge. And we are going to click on the edge button at the top, and we're going to bridge those edge loops. And Magic. that looks okay. Um, let's see. Do we want to... Nah, we're not going to get too crazy with that. Um, let's do six cuts so we get some fancy shape going there. Ooh, how did it put in that, like, little curve in there, naturally? It was just the result of getting the cuts in there? Yep, so if you increase oh, the smoothness factor, uh, it will try and be as smooth as possible to the uh, original surfaces. Um, so we're going to leave it at a smoothness of one, uh, and we're going to put in six cuts should be fine. Now we are going to click mesh without deselecting this we're gonna click mesh we're gonna click separate and we're gonna separate selection there we go so now we're going to press tab to go out of edit mode so we're in object mode we're going to select our our uh, little bar here this bar will have the same origin as the rest of the ship because we haven't set a custom origin for it uh, start struggling to select loops. Don't know if it's a blender bug or what. So the easiest way to select loops is when you are in edit mode, edge, holding alt, and then selecting that. But if that doesn't work for you, you can single click one. You can go to the select button. You can go down to loops and you can select edge loops. And then it will do it for you that way as well. We're gonna go here and we're gonna introduce our first modifier. So in this tall row of color column, a tall row is just a column of uh, colorful buttons, we're going to click on the blue wrench. Wait, how did you get the bridge edge loops pop-up window? Oh, uh, so here, we can do this again. Um, so if we, the square holes are what we've just made uh, when we bridge those edge loops. If we here, 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 and then we go over this side. One, two, three, four. Then we click on edge at the top of the screen. Bridge edge loops. And then so that it's not perfectly straight, want to get a bit, you know, fancy character in there, even if it's not super realistic. We'll increase the number of cuts to about six. You can go even higher if you want to go crazy mm -hmm. with it. Uh, but six yeah, should the, be the fine. Yeah, the little window pops up automatically, basically. 
Yeah. Is there a way to manually make it pop up, or is it that's the only way? No, it pops like, up when you do you it, and as soon as, you... as soon as you click off, it's gone. Okay. Catch it while it's there. Uh, now we will mesh, separate, selection. And now we will click on our little sort of support. We can even give it a name. Support. We will add a... Well, actually... No, we don't even need to do it with a modifier. We will just shift D to duplicate. You can duplicate anything in the program. So we'll shift D to duplicate it. We will right click to snap it back to where it originally was. And then we'll just rotate it around a little bit. If you want to snap it by 15 oh. degree increments, you can hold control and snap it that way. So for example, we can rotate it by say, About 30 degrees, give or take. And then grab both of these, shift D, rotate around again, a bit further. There we go. And then shift D. Get around a little bit further, and then just one more. Shift D, rotate, there. There we go, fun little, fun little engine of some kind. And then we can so come the up here. So the modifier would have enabled, oh, yeah. Oh, go ahead, no, no. Yes, I was just gonna answer a question oh, oh. in chat, but I can wait. Yeah, what you got? Okay. What you got? Uh, it was just a similar question to before. JLVS Tune says, uh, I have made fast progress and I was wondering where would you use 3D models in a cartoon? Um, as we mentioned, we, uh, we do use them for um, layout purposes, for backgrounds and for cars and uh, guns in our particular case, but it's going to be dependent on the project, really. Um, mm -hmm. You may use I them as your I would say that... Yeah. I, I would say that it's probably a good idea if you are going to be storyboarding if you could at least rough out your environment mm -hmm. even if it's just a bunch of circles and cubes to just roughly represent things that yeah. will make it a lot easier to storyboard if you have something like that going on because if you need to change angles and like make decisions uh, that are rather extreme <laughs> uh, with your camera movement camera placement uh it will make it a lot easier to rough all that stuff out very quickly because you want to focus on the characters right. and what they're doing rather than static static objects yeah. so much it's uh so. showing you rocky's violin here which has been very useful because having a uh animator reproduce that every frame is um mind-bogglingly <laughs> uh, <Hell>. yeah it's <laughs> just it's, if there's anything we, worse we, than being asked to draw a gun, he'd have to, have, to draw a violin. Right. He, either we would have to cut that, cut any violin stuff out of the animation, or we, he'd have to have a very cartoony looking violin, which is generally what you see with very toony tunes. Like they just simplify it down mm -hmm. to, you know. But Lackadaisy has a lot of emphasis on detail and historical, you yeah. know, factoids and things. And so we wanted something a little mm -hmm. with some, you know, realism to it um, mm -hmm. to ground it a little bit in that history and. Uh, and, and such so we we decided to use 3d models for things like this and the cars and such um mm -hmm. because if we draw them not only is that like uh i mean if we're, if we're trying to draw them um accurately uh and trying to animate that every frame that it, it would just be nuts to do that i mean even in older uh animated films mm -hmm. you have uh they'd rotoscope they'd have a model of a car and they would film it and then rotoscope it not draw mm -hmm. hand draw i mean they'd hand, they, they are hand drawing it but um, you know, they're, they're tracing an image because getting the perspective right on hard-edged objects like that is... Uh... It's it's basically, what do you want most of your notes to be? Right. Uh, notes about character acting, or do you want them to be about fix the gun? No, like this. No, like this. No, fix the gun. <laughs> fix the gun. Fix the gun. And yeah. it's like, we have enough problems keeping Rocky's face on model, let alone all the weaponry. <laughs> so... 
Um, it is a way of going like, if you can make this, do this one small thing, then you can focus on other things that are much more important. Right. So it's like, um, it, you can, you can draw yeah. everything and do it all by excruciatingly by hand and have like a, a three minute short, or you can use 3D <laughs> and have a 20 minute short. Uh, yeah. Uh, saving yourself, uh, a mm -hmm. lot of, a lot of time and, uh unnecessary yeah. toil that's like just doing it for the sake of doing it or doing it for bragging rights or whatever it's as someone who has animated like deer antlers and uh, still objects and and just you know drawing cars and stuff like at infinitum um i'd much rather just have a 3d object if uh if it was available to me at any given point for stuff like that that's entirely static xanthera brings Xanthera brings up the Iron Giant being a good example of combination of 2D and 3D, mm -hmm. and I yeah. heavily agree. Uh, yeah. Likewise, Disney's Atlantis and Treasure Planet are mm -hmm. two really big ones uh, that, yeah, that honestly can... inspired me to do this originally. <laughs> Some yeah. characters themselves, like, or or aspects of characters, may also be 3D. Like you, we opted for like our characters being. Um, you know, 2D animated, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it really just depends on the project, how far you want to take the 3D and how much you want to incorporate it. You can mm -hmm. have a tiny little bit and maybe you only use it for layout, and, or you might have quite a lot of it where it's like a, yeah. you know, a very heavy mix of 2D and 3D, or maybe it's just yeah. all 3D, if, I don't know. <laughs> if, you're, if you're the kind of person who wants to hand animate it as like a demonstration of technical expertise and like an exercise, I think that's that's totally okay. But um, if your concern is more about like focusing on other elements, it's uh, it's totally fair to make use of what tools that you have on hand. We have to so many tools nowadays to make animation much, much easier, much, much more accessible than ever before. And so uh, if you can find a shortcut that works well and looks good, then, you know, use it. Um, and uh, yeah. a lot of animation is in fact just like creative applications of um, visual technology. <laughs> like, it has been since the very beginning. Like, in a sense, that's what animation is it, to start with, was just like, when it came to film animation at least, as just like demonstration of, hey, look at these neat tricks that we can pull. Um, and uh, th things like using 3D models, like digital or actual physical models, either way, uh, have been part of animation tech for a long time. Like Bambi, you know those Bambi antlers? Uh, or not Bambi, beer antlers, Bambi <laughs> antlers, excuse me. They had actual, they, they actually built those antlers physically. Like these, are, those were some of like the top tier animators, you know, of, uh, of the century. And they were just like, even they were like deer antlers. No, <laughs> they're like, they tried very hard to move them around. They said that they had to, uh, if you look into the making of Bambi, there's a book that you can find. They said that um, they had a big problem where the deer antlers would feel slightly rubbery, like the way that they would move. It was just too difficult to keep them consistent. Uh, so they just built antlers and just traced over them, basically. So the antlers that you see in Bambi, they're rotoscoped. Uh, you can't tell. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's wonderfully done. And they just were like, how can we focus on things that actually matter? Because the, just if there's a way to find a shortcut that looks good, use it. <laughs> Save yourself the time. Animation is such a labor intensive medium that you might as well just take advantage of stuff. Take advantage of the tech that you have on hand. Um, don't necessarily do things just on the principle of the thing. The, the principle should be getting a cartoon done. What helps you get there? Um, okay. And what's the purpose of it? So. Uh, back to back to Newt though. Let's let him. Sorry, I know he's got yeah. limited time. So yeah, uh, sorry Newt yeah. for that di diversion. No, it's okay. Um, and yes, Sir Arius, Blender might be hard, but hopefully I can change that perspective a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. While Fable, while Fable was talking about that, I did think of something that we can do. Uh, these little pylons that we just duplicated around or whatever. Delete those except for the original one, because I thought of a much cooler way we can do this that can show you uh, some good modifiers. So just select those with shift and clicking and go ahead and delete those. We'll keep the original. So we'll click on our vessel. We'll press tab. We will go ahead and alt and click one of the edge rings uh, that are right near where the, the little support structure is. 
we'll shift D to duplicate that and right click to snap it right back to its original position. We'll do mesh, separate, selection, we'll tab out, we'll select our ring, object, set origin, origin to geometry, and then we will do object, convert to a curve. So now, donation from Haunt Story. Thank you. Thank you, Haunt Story. I'll see what um, it says. Then we will click on our support, and we're going to add a couple of modifiers. So, yes, Kron, he picked it out. We're going to do array and curve modifiers. Uh, so we're going to start with an two. array. Hmm? Wait, uh, two messages when you're ready. Just let me know. I can read them out. Hit me. What we got? Okay, Harley, actually nine minutes ago, said, My mouse just bit the dust. Oh, I'm so sorry. But you're doing great. Look forward to following this in the future. Oh, I'm so sorry, Harley. Um, please take care. It always really stinks when a pet passes away. I hope they had a good time with you. No, I, I, think, story, I think they uh, mean mouses and they mean their, their, like their computer oh. mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be either. <laughs> you know, look, I love that mouse very much. It was dear to me. It flashed rainbows. <laughs> Sorry, I'm th my my brain's on rats lately. What can I say? Um, Hot Story says, just wanted to say thanks for all of your hard work. You are the glue in these projects, and we wouldn't be able to make these productions without you. Wishing you the best for the future. That's very true. Thank you, Hot Story. Newt is essential. Aww. Yes. Ashley can attest. Like, uh, she, he's been doing so much on her production. I'm just, like, blown away. Newt's a fucking like, blessing and a wonderful talent. Yeah. Thank you, guy. <laughs> Precious slimy friend is Newt, who makes things possible. Teaches us all so much. And now he's offering you uh, an education for free or a small donation. <laughs> please, please offer him your, your donations. Aww. Computer mice have feelings too. <laughs> oh, I'm getting made fun of now for my misunderstanding. Oh, well, whatever. Enjoy the comedy, folks. <laughs> but um, yes. So array modifier. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to uh, apply some transforms. Uh, so we're gonna press A, Control A. We're gonna apply our transforms. Then we're going to click on our support. We're going to add a couple of modifiers. So we're going to add an array, uh, which an array is basically how you, you know, repeat things along a certain path. You can do it in all three axes and whatnot for a variety of fun, uh, fun results. But for now, we are going to drop that array close, just with a little drop down menu. Also, again, like I mentioned before, this is under the blue wrench under the modifier properties. Uh, then we're going to add a curve modifier, and we are going to select the only curve in the scene, which is our cylinder. Don't panic. <laughs> uh, <it'll... laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Oh, which one of you? Oh. Why are you all being weird? I'm enjoying this arcane magic way. happening in front of me. You speak the old words, Newt. <laughs> R, X, nope. R, Y, maybe. Let's see if it wants us to do it this way, because it's usually how I do it. There we go, okay. Jet says, oh no, the space noodles have broken containment. <laughs> space noodles have broken containment. <laughs> oh, so Oreo says, don't panic. Program proceeds to panic. <laughs> It'd be like that sometimes. Ooh. It's being Fun a little shapes. weird. I don't know why it's oh, not linking wait, like that... I'm used to. And yes, we could, uh, cron 121, we could rotate the array around an empty. Um, but I am trying to... 
do that. Yes, I'm aware the offset is relatively small. Hmm. So why is it not? Huh. Huh. Yeah, because I mean. So what you're trying to do is get the object to um, array around the curve, I assume. To yeah, do and it's, some, it's something I've done. Only a couple of uh, clicks, what you were doing manually. Yeah. Yeah, and it's something I've done a million times before, but it's not, and I'm not sure why. Well, I right, guess well, that's never... just Blender today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never mind. I guess we'll just uh, go back to doing it the old-fashioned you know, way. Hmm? Um, well, the origin point is still on the uh, the core object, right? Like maybe if you set the origin to there, maybe it'll behave differently. I'm not as good at this as you, though, so let's. I mean, that's the thing that. Yeah. Like that doesn't fix it, and I'm not actually sure why. Huh. But uh, huh. okay, well. so we'll just leave that for a moment. Uh, we'll edit this in a bit, and then we'll duplicate it around like we did before. Yes, large shade, mm. the stream is going to be saved. Xanthera, the scale has already been applied. Um, okay, so we're going to continue working on our fuselage for the moment. Uh, we'll eventually get into things. Uh, Kron already applied all of the, uh, all of the transforms. Um, those like today's stream don't usually get deleted. Yep, uh, these mm. should not be deleted. Uh, so let's see, we are going to get some modules going. So let's see, first, actually, you know what? I'm going to head, go ahead and remove this face, just for now. We'll, we'll re-add this face once we get up to the nose. So if you don't want to go around and try and, you know, haphazardly select the whole thing, all you have to do is select one, and then select, linked, linked flat, flat faces, then we can go ahead and X, delete faces. And let's hold Alt, select our edge, Let's see, how do we want to go about this? So, decrease the size of that engine module a little bit. And go ahead and E, scale, down a bit. And then we'll move that forward a bit on the x-axis. I love watching people model. E, scale. Something okay. so calming about it. We're both the same with normals. I don't know if everybody has the money, but for stuff like this, I love to see the hard ops add on, which is a paid add on, automates most of those tedious processes. I have hard ops, I have grid modeler, I have all of those things, but I can't use any of those because they're paid for add ons, so I can't show people how to use them. <laughs> um, let's see, we'll go ahead and extend along the X. So. Well, let's get really fancy with it. Let's do like a like a centrifuge habitation ring. Ooh. Um, We're going for a, a, a long-term space uh, journey, huh? Yeah, something like that. Are we going to Mars or are we going further? Uh, actually, if folks want, we can make a planet uh, at the end of this. I'll show you how to make a procedural little planet. Oh, that'd be very cool. Can it be made of cake? <laughs> We can make a cake planet that can satisfy oh. uh, that can yes. satisfy Tomb's request. We can make a cake planet. So we're gonna leave yes. a hard edge I down. Cake planet. And I want the side at any good free add-ons. Hmm. What are the best free add-ons? Let me think on that. Uh, and I'll get back to you. Let me think on that. So let's go ahead and select this edge, because I want this edge right here to be the same as this edge. So let's Shift-D to duplicate and move it over. But I want it to snap properly. So let's turn on Snapping, which is this little magnet up in the top center of your screen. We'll do it by edges. Um, yeah. And then let's see, we'll do it center center there we go turn off snapping and then hold shift alt click the edge oh not that 
and then go back to edge, bridge edge loops. There we go. So then we can continue along. People like the cake planet idea. And then we'll extend this out a little bit. So this is where we'll put like some solar panels on uh, just a bit, get some fun textures going on there. Let's do E, scale down, G, X, move out for another module. Okay, you know what, let's do... So I've got this selected, let's just do hold control, then plus, 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 plus. We'll turn snapping back on, just on edges, and then shift D to duplicate. Actually, let's go to vertices, snap vertex. Why are we not? Oh, right, because we'll get it approximately there. And then select that loop with the Alt click on the edge. There we go. But now I have a bunch of doubled up vertices here. So we'll click here on our little Y. Above the colorful atom, you have the four circles. We'll click on those two overlapping squares. That turns on like the ghost transparent mode. So we will box select these and we will do right click, merge vertices by distance, include unselected. Why did that only remove zero? by distance. Oh, there we go. Okay. Sorry. Increase the uh, the merge distance. For some reason, uh, they didn't do it the first time. But, and we can uncheck those two overlapping squares. And there we go. Okay, now we duplicated that module. So we'll have solar panels along this little center hub, and we'll have sort of a rotating habitation thing along this center hub. Donation from Ninja Mouse. Oh, well, thank you. See, Harley, your mouse didn't die. It, uh... Just became a ninja. Those. We'll go ahead and go to face select. Oh, whoop. Get on the box. Here, just select a face. Select linked, linked black faces. Let's go ahead and pull this back a bit. I want this hub to be a little bit bigger than that one. Uh, sun panels, a fusion reactor, laser point. Yeah, big mass accelerator. CAD designs. So, Toon Kid makes a very good point of this makes me think of CAD designs. There's a lot of different approaches you can make when you approach Blender. I approach Blender like a CAD program because that's what I was trained on classically. Uh, I was originally trained on Fusion and Autodesk and Inventor, uh, Maya, 3ds Max, so on and so forth. So when I picked up Blender and taught myself it, I learned it like a CAD program. I have since gone to learn it as an animation and design program, but I, I still learn from my roots, uh, or play from my roots, rather. Messages from the Kofi people. Oreo, um, who bought you a coffee, says, for the group tangent, heart. And uh, the Ninja Mouse said, thank you for teaching Blender. It's been a beast trying to teach myself. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's so much easier to learn if you have somebody who can like walk you through things. I, I just know this, like, when when I'm trying to learn software, sometimes I'll have, like, a stupid question that I can't find an answer to on the internet because I don't even know how to frame the question, or it's so obvious that it's in the documentation, but I don't know how to frame what I'm looking for to find it easily in the documentation. So it's mm. very helpful to know somebody who already knows the program so you can ask them the stupid question, and then it's no longer a stupid question. <laughs> So what I did here, folks, was I went up to add, I added a cube, and then I just drug it over here just to the side uh, to approximately where I'm going to be putting it. Then I hit S to scale. I pressed Z to squish it. Uh, got it kind of thin, thin-ish. I might even make it a little thinner in a second. 
and then I went to edit mode with tab. I selected the edge uh, selection button here. So you have your vertex, your edge, and your face selection. And then we're going to press, whoops, I actually hit undo. Then we're going to press control B to enter bevel mode. And you can see if you pull it too far, it breaks things. Uh, but we're going to scroll up on the mouse wheel until we've, you know, got five or six. And we're going to kind of round off the edges of that square there. Don't need to mess That's with any of the settings coaster. in here. It is a lovely little coaster. Um, we're, of course, going to hit shade smooth here. We're just like before, going to go down to this green triangle. Check auto smooth there. Looks much better. And we're going to make our first material. So we're going to make a new material. We're going to call it solar panels. Now let's go into the rendered view. So let's see. Let's get a... Oh, also we want to control A, apply scale. So when you hit control A, you open the apply menu and click on scale, third button. Let's do, how do we want to do this? Let's do a brick texture. We'll do a control T and open the mapping nodes for that. Let's plug the factor into our roughness. Let's crank that metallic up. Crank that specular up, make it all specky. There we go, we're starting to get there. Uh, let's change that offset to one, so everything goes in square there. Let's go ahead and, oh wait, adjust that brick width until we're approximately square. Let's see, crank everything up. Now, is the brick texture just a, a tessellation, basically, or... Basically, like, yeah. Can you change the, sh the shape of the thing to, like, a hexagon, for instance? Yeah, I could... I mean, hell, I could click on this and materials... Add solar panels. Um, and it will just procedurally add that brick texture based on, a, based on the shape of the mesh and how we unwrap the UVs later. Ooh, okay. There is a, a Jeffrey Wilson asks, I'm curious why Blender's Z-axis points upwards and Y-axis points forward. It yeah, is that the is only program thing. that does it <laughs> that I have it's seen. It's so confusing, too, because that's not how we talk about axes <laughs> ever. <laughs> I wish they would just redo it, but I suspect it's a quirk that's now hard-baked into everything. If they fixed it, it would uh, break a lot of models. <laughs> get an emission just so we can see what we're doing there we go get our color one to be like sort of a a bronzy gold and then the darker shade hey. for cracked cell to be something like that the emission shader now if i pull this up where's our sun Uh, MR Fiddlewig says, could you make an interior of a model using Blender, or do you need to use another program? Oh, you could definitely do an interior with Blender as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Same principles. You're just working inside of another object. Like, you make a big cube or a big sphere, and you'd basically be inside of it and placing objects around. Let's do an invert on that roughness. But there we go. Yeah, by default, black is the most reflective and white is the least reflective don't ask uh i cannot answer that one for you <laughs> um that's just how the blender render engine works but if we slap an invert node uh, on that texture then that'll make that a little bit nicer now let's make these uh, a bit brighter Magic. on that panel there there we go that's you, you gotta pretty. love eevee you gotta That's... love Eevee. I, I remember way back when, like, uh, when I was doing stuff in Maya, and you'd have to, like, render something out every time you wanted to see something like this. That's no a real really groovy anything. beige dance floor you made. Mm -hmm. uh, let's add a vector. A vector disc. <laughs> That's the, the well... lackadaisy <laughs> disco floor. <laughs> 
God, they were ahead of their time. <laughs> <laughs> it was all Zib's idea. <laughs> oh my God, he'd be so at home in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> he was born in the wrong era. <laughs> yeah. Placement, give it a bit of false depth. There you go. I want to make that more glassy. Oh. There we go. Just give it even more shine. Now, now I'm just like consider Zib in bell bottoms. Consider. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Those those one piece like disco suit things. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. I think that looks pretty good. Oh man, if if we had time to make this a disco solar panel, <laughs> but we can't tangent too hard, unless someone pays for it. Someone someone pay to make it a, a disco so solar panel. <laughs> I mean, it is it is possible. Uh, G Z. Wait, wait, let's change Z to zero. Okay, so we've got our base solar panel that we'll use. Uh, then from there, let's add. Let's see. Let's do it with a plane. Let's do a plane. Where you at? Over here. Bring it over here. Oh, I forgot. I have snapping on. Turn snapping off. Oh, my queen mm -hmm. has an interesting answer as to why uh, black is reflective and white is not reflective in Blender. It says, it's not a reflectiveness input, that's why. It's a roughness input, PBR standard. Black equals no roughness, sharp reflections. White equals full roughness, no reflections. Interesting. The more you know. <laughs> Yes, I always suspect that there there's a, a logic behind what they do, just you got to figure out what that logic was. I, I strongly right. suspect that the access thing is just something that's been hard baked into Blender since the beginning, and uh, they can't they can't change it at this point. But if so, anybody knows better, please correct me, because it's always interesting to know why these quirks exist, because they actually teach you a lot about the development of the program. So what I did here, folks, was I took a plane... I went into edit mode, vertex edit mode, uh, up here on the top left. I deleted the bottom two vertices, so we just had the top edge, which you can see right here. Then I duplicated that and drag it down. Then I clicked on this vertice and this vertice, and I pressed F to fill it with a new edge. I did the same with the opposite corner. And then we're going to select these two and fill. And then we're going to press A to select everything. We're going to shift D to duplicate again. Let's turn snapping back on with, nope, I want to do vertex. What you do in building a solar sail? Uh, I am building the gantry panel? that's going to go behind the solar panels. Oh, I see. Okay. So we do that. And then A, mesh, clean up merge by distance and that'll remove those two vertices and then we can tab out object set origin origin to geometry then let's do modifier and add let's do a solidifier oh wait first I need to go back to edit and extrude it along the z-axis just a little bit Ooh. give us some material to work is with. a me on says uh i mean z is up and down in games and such with 3d assets if that's true that is possibly why that quirk exists because but in uh mathematics uh x and y are considered the up and down of a 2d plane with z being depth and that's how it's usually referred to in all other common parlance so now i'd like to know why games does it differently if that is the case wow look at that we want to leave it as no, i might just leave it as yeah, the flat solid. country mm. let's do complex let's do even didn't get too weird on me 
Yeah, that should work. So there we go. This is our solar gantry. So let's call that uh, frame. And then we can grab this panel. So use, so let's do object, snap, cursor selected, object, snap, select the cursor. We'll leave sort of about that amount there. We'll click on this guy, just minimize the solidify modifier. Add modifier array to zero, one, oop, negative one. Then we'll decrease it just slightly. We have a this donation. This is just a, a really involved way of uh, of uh, playing Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> I figured Ultimate someone Kerbal would uh, <laughs> would bring up the idea. <laughs> um, so oh. here we'll extend that out by. Yeah, five should be fine. I get, nah, five's a little long. We'll just do four. Petey, we'll who here. bought you a coffee, uh, says, Don't have much to offer, but I hope this helps. Just started learning Blender a few weeks back. So this was timed perfectly. Thanks for doing this. Smiley face. Aw, well, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you take something away from it. So we'll do another array modifier on the panels. Leave a little bit of a gap, just for stylistic choice. Uh, you can choose not to if you want. You can just do a straight negative one, and, you know, it, the texture will tile perfectly. Um, I like, oh, whoops, that's a bit much. Minus 1.05. There we go. That'll look good. Kerbal Space Program Ultra Hard Mode. Accurate. Could you use Blender to build, like, uh, custom props for Kerbal Space Program? I don't know if it allows for that kind of thing. Uh, yes, yes, you could. You, uh, I actually Ooh. have before. Oh. Um, you could use it to, uh, to make custom meshes for the game. Actually, let's take this, get a little bit fancier. I'm reminded... I'm reminded oh, suddenly I... Keep I uh, took my dog to dog training today and on the drive back uh, I was looking in the opposite direction I was able to look over the hill that I was driving on and I saw NASA and it's like, oh yeah, JPL Laboratory is near here in uh, in Los Angeles and I thought of oh, you, yeah. Newt, I was like Newt would like this <laughs> and you're like, look, it's them it's the big logo There we go. So what I did, folks, was I duplicated our frame and moved it over here. I decreased the array that changes how long it is because the center one is longer. I added another array that adds on to the first one, but I did that one in the uh, wider or the X direction so that it goes to the other side of the pole. So now we can take this. Actually, you know what? Let's those panels all the way down yeah like that and then we'll shift D to duplicate those that nice coming together so quickly there Ooh. we'll change his offset Diesel Rock says it's the rover on Mars, people. I assume that's in response to my JPL comment. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, met uh, there. Uh, so when the rover was touching down, uh, I went to Krispy Kreme because I wanted one of their Mars donuts. It turns out a bunch of uh, JPL people were there also getting their own Mars donuts, <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is so cool. Um, I actually got to have a conversation with one of the guys there. I was like so super excited to talk to this guy. Tell me about your your uh your Mars bot, please. 
he was actually really interested in our project. I guess for him, it's very normal to hang around people who, uh, who build robots for Mars. And for me, it's very normal to hang around people who make cartoons. So we were novel to each other. Oh. Yeah. So now we're going to Said donut on. was very good. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So we're going to yes. click on our small bank of solar panels. We're going to hold shift and click on our small frames. We're going to hold left control and click P to parent. And then we're going to click object. And now if we move this guy, the solar panels move with it. So then we're going to click on the small frame and click on the big frame. Control P parent. Then we're going to click on the big solar panel and the big frame. Control P parent and parent to object. Now if we move this big frame, the entire arm moves. Ooh. So let's see. So now let's go ahead and get the hub going. So let's go back to the hub, uh, to the big ship. We'll press tab to go back into edit mode. We'll go into edges. Press control R to open loop cut again. We will scroll up to open two cuts. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, and just as you scroll. Um, oh, thank you for the donation from Oreo Kitsune. Uh, so we'll stick with I will two. read that out for you. We'll left click, we'll right click to snap it right back to where it was. Uh, we will scale on the X axis to spread them apart a bit. And what does Oreo Kitsune have to say? Is there a simple-ish answer to fixing bone heat waiting errors? If not, and you are planning any bone waiting, no problem. Another Dono, anyway. Heart. Oh god, do we want to get into rigging? Oh dear. Um, oh, painting, painting weights. Oof. Uh, not unless you intend mm. to build a little alien, I suppose. If only you had a little newt model that you could just like show off real quick. Oh, I have an old one somewhere, actually, that I used last Christmas. Uh, I'll make a note, I'm maybe, if you have any time. Yeah. When we do a part two, or maybe it would get pushed to part three, depending on how part two goes of this, I would like to address uh, proper rigging techniques as far as adjusting uh, weight painting and everything. But I don't think oh, that's Oreo something... says, nope, I hear pain, never mind. I hear the pain. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, rigging doesn't suck. Rigging is fun. Rigging is just hard. It's um, its own challenge. There's a reason why people get paid to do just that. <laughs> uh, so now that we've got the hub selected, we can go face. We're going to extrude faces along normals to extend the hub out a bit. We're going to go a little bit past. Uh, then we're going to select this face, this face, select link. Link fat faces. Gonna I to inset a little bit just to get a bit of, you know, character going. E to extrude. I I Oops. I like what you did there because I've always thought about how do I do that kind of thing that you just did. Selecting well, there both. you go. Yeah. And then let's grab these four faces and these four faces face, extrude along normals, and we'll scale, nope, so if you see, if I press scale right now, it scales to the inside of the mesh, that's not what I want, so I'm going to hold the period key uh, on my keyboard, not the decimal, if you have a numpad, um, go to hold the period, and go down to individual origins, and then let go, and now, you can see we Ooh. scale along that axis, I'm going to scale down just a little bit. And actually want to scale up slightly on the x-axis. There we go. So that'll somebody be kind of our... bought a coffee for Newt. Thank you, somebody. <laughs> I appreciate it. And I guess uh, that confirms that's how they do their anonymous donations. Mm -hmm. So we're going to grab our frame. Going to move it into rough position. Actually might scale it down slightly and you'll notice if I scale the frame everything attached to it scales with it because that's how the parenting system works Hank bot uh, Newt is making a spaceship 
right? Yeah. Yes. Actually, let's move that away just for a moment more. So let's see, I'm not sure how well it'll work on these faces, but we can try it. So if we go back to our hub and we select these four faces on both sides, I want a cylinder here so that if we rotate these, they look, you know, like they're rotating on a joint here. And I could just, while we're in edit mode, add cylinder and the cylinder would be attached to this mesh. Uh, but I want to try instead pressing F3, which also, if you can ever not find a function, press F3 and you can just type in any function in the entire program and it'll do it. Uh, so Let's we want functions. to uh, mesh transform to sphere. Oh. Well, that kind of worked. <laughs> it looks okay. Uh, yeah. Good probably enough for still TV. Gonna... <laughs> Fair enough. I'm still going to add a, a sphere, but we're going to go mesh, snap, cursor to selected, add cylinder. We're going to rotate on the Y. Nope. Rotate on the X axis. Rotate. X. 90. And then scale that down pretty substantially. And then let's uh -oh. grab this face. Not that face. Nope. This face. Just bring that there and scale it down slightly. Jaka is reminding you to save. Oh, I have not saved at all yet, have I? You should save. You should save right now. <laughs> Like, the moment the program hears those words, it's going to kill. It's going to die. It will kill. <laughs> and occasionally folks will just see me, like, inset a handful of faces, or uh, just do little detail things, whatever. Like, never, especially in space stuff. Uh, never underestimate the power of just doing little bits of detail here and there and here and there. Um, it's absolutely wonderful. Like, we'll get into greebling in a second, uh, which will get really fancy. I also just love that word. Are you going to save? Uh, I'll save in a minute. Okay. <laughs> Remember, eat, sleep, drink, water, this and last sleep. words. I'll save in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, we're going to select, link, select, linked. There we go. Just gonna get D to duplicate that. And the mesh mirror X global. No, not X global. Mesh mirror Y global. And then just move that to approximately the other side. Does uh, Blender have autosave? Yes, it auto. It I well, I at least have mine okay. set up to auto save every five minutes. Cool. Okay, I was gonna say yeah. I, I work in 3ds Max, and it's it's got an auto save, so it has. And here we will save this the, um, as a. There we go. Okay, we have saved yes, the project. Thank you. We can <laughs> breathe. <laughs> <laughs> we were all sitting here in suspense. Kind of it's like, for the love of God, don't have him say that, and then it crashes. <laughs> Let's do this and this. Select, link, link, mesh. We're gonna go ahead and separate these little joints. Nice selection. And select. David H. asks, isn't there a mirror tool so that you don't have to duplicate these shapes on both sides? Yes, I was being lazy. Don't fight me. <laughs> yeah, there's like <laughs> symmetry tools and things you can use for also those kind of things. Um, th there are very much uh, symmetry tools. And actually, given I was separating the objects anyways, I can go ahead and just delete the other one and properly mirror it. So let's use that. All of our... Don't let you... Oh, perfect. Sometimes you don't 
you don't know if you're going to be like I end up doing that a lot too where I just am duplicating and mirroring things instead of actually working in symmetry because I don't know how symmetrical I want something to be necessarily if you're going into something knowing you're building something that's going to be perfectly symmetrical but that's fine but those tools are very useful but sometimes yeah it's just like you just kind of do it on the fly and there's quick ways to do it that way too because you there kind we of go it is fussing around with your model it is nice and mirrored. rocks asks mm -hmm. Uh, we got a name for this bad boy yet? I'm thinking USS Long Boy. <laughs> says, I'm saying the lack of ship infinity. Uh, how about people donate to uh, name it? Yeah, I guess maybe. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Biggest donation with a name wins, but that seems like asking for <laughs> trouble. So <laughs> that's like uh, rabbits versus lizards. <laughs> well, with the potential to get. Yeah, I don't know. Anytime you have a naming contest, you're gonna... Bodie McBoatface? Yeah. <laughs> Shippy Although, McBoatface. I'm thinking we haven't put any, um, you know, caveats on it, so it's like, you're gonna get something... No Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> Too obvious. It will definitely win. That's the problem. You need an actual competition, and you will not have a competition if, mm. if uh, Bodie McBoatface is in the race. I gotta say, I do like... Um... Both USS Longboy and Lack of, Lack of Ship Infinity, yeah, uh, are pretty pretty good. Yes. Uh, someone else can. Maybe we can do a a, a competition uh, mm -hmm. between the two, or if someone has a third one, I'll throw in. So there it's we pity. go. Like bought a coffee mm -hmm. and says, "Hope this little bit helps. Good luck with the stream." Thank oh, you. thank you. Um, so here, let's actually. That keyframe. Okay, so what I just did was I added some keyframes and did some animation, just super basic. Uh, so basically, describing what I just did is everything has location and rotation data. So on the timeline, and remember, you can switch menus by the top left button. So I switched it from the shader editor back to the timeline. So I selected the location, I right-clicked, and here, let me delete the keyframes. I right-clicked, insert keyframe, right-click, insert keyframe. So now their location and rotation data are stored in this instant at frame one. Then say I want the panels to spin like mad, then at our last frame, I could go here and do 360, uh, 360 degrees of revolution. And then over the 250 frame animation, It automatically interpolates the panels go in hog wild. Hot. Sorry, that's automatic. Whenever my birds whistle at me, I, I automatically whistle back. I had to remind myself not to. You are absolutely fine. Uh, so yes, I'm actually going to take this bearing, take these little hubs, and we're just going to duplicate those and move them down right here. And then, just because I kind of want them bigger, we're going to go ahead and scale those slightly. Because I want those passageways to, you know, be big enough for crew and stuff. And we're going to select the bearing. We're going to edit. So we're going to alt-click, oh, whoops, go to edge mode. Alt-click that edge. Alt-click that edge. And, nope. Shift Alt click that edge and scale it in. There we go. That gives us our nice little bearing. And let's see, how do we want to do a crew module? We'll figure that out in a minute. Well, uh, let's see. Would it be a big circle that you want to do, or would they have like two bars like spinning around? I'm thinking like interstellar. Ooh. Uh, let's mirror... Nope, not X. Global. Y. Global. Ah, but Newt, he asks, says Crone 121, facetiously for others' benefit. What if we want a different kind of interpolation rather than linear? I was actually gonna ask that also for other people's benefit. Uh, jokes on you. That was not linear interpolation from the start. That was actually uh, 
smooth interpolation. But here, if we go to frame 250, whoa, hello. Oh, wait. <laughs> because that thing had keyframed location, and that was on a... There we go. So here, we can select this. Focus on it. Go up to frame 250. We can set it to rotate 360 degrees. So you'll notice when I hit space to start, if I actually insert the keyframe, <laughs> there we go. So if I hit space to start and I insert the correct keyframe, <laughs> <laughs> There we go. So it takes a second to start up, it picks up speed as it goes, and then it starts to slow down as it gets to its resting position. But what if I would run it rotating constantly? I would select the object, and I've got my keyframe selected. I will go to the graph editor, and you can see this nice smooth curve that goes way up here. Let's go ahead and scale that down a little bit. Keep scaling. Keep scaling. <laughs> there we go. So you can see the green representing the y-axis. So what we can do is A to select all. We can press the letter T and we can change that to a linear transformation. So now, that rotation will be a constant speed the entire time that it's rotating. And this is how you make very nice, smooth loops. It's almost too smooth. I want more wash out with that. There we go. Yeah, that's actually what I was going to do for the, uh, for the, um, habitation section. Because the solar panels, uh, will have those tracking the sun in a bit, but there is no reason that they should be spinning like helicopter blades. Go back to our timeline. Okay, so we've got this going. Let's go ahead and... Here, select linked. We'll go ahead and delete the vertices. Let's do this a bit differently because these two sections will be identical. So that's where's mirror. And we're going to select the y-axis. So there we go. So now you'll notice as I make changes to this guy, they happen on both sides. Yeah. ourselves a cube up in here. Nah, this is nice. Okay, so we want to do this. Actually, you know what? We'll make it even we'll make it nice and pretty. Get rid of the cube. Add dash cylinder. 
Nope, wait. Click, snap, cursor to selected. Uh, center. Rotate, Y, 90 degrees. Go ahead and scale it way up. Mm. Scale it against the X axis, way ah, down. I forgot I was muted. <laughs> oh, okay. A, uh, a car with music playing was going by. I wasn't sure if YouTube would pick that up. Um, there was a question from Lalston McKenzie asked, who is your favorite character? I believe that's who's... aimed at you, Newt. Oh, who is my favorite character? Uh, yeah. Hmm. I mean, hands down, uh, not enough appreciation for Lacey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> gotta love her. Let's see, uh, now you can maneuver to a T pose position to assert dominance over other spacefaring species. <laughs> Oh god. You should create the T-Pose rocket the... and T-Pose rocket and Kerbal Space Program when call it the T-Rocket. God, remember T-Posing Nina? That was like the the first yes. big joke of the project. It was so the good. Fans loved it. So let's do let's see, these three. These three. These three. Also, uh, I was not explaining what I actually did during that. So I took a cylinder, I made it real big, I inset the faces a bit, and then deleted both of the inset faces, and then bridged the interior edge loops to make this sort of hard torus. Now, could I have just used the torus tool? Yes. But <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> um, actually, let's do this two by twos. Can you hear uh, any music coming through my mic? No. Good, okay. Because they are they are blasting it across the street, and I'm like, oh, please don't let YouTube come on down on my head because of my neighbors. It's like 3 p.m. on a... Well, no, it is a weekend. I have got to give them that. We'll go ahead and inset Look, all it's of It's Saturday. Space. They're going to party. <laughs> Fair. Perfect material for you. There we go. Ooh, and nothing, and nothing, and nothing. I do actually want to... Here. Edge rings. So the circle is a bit rough, especially at this scale. I should have subdivided it before uh, I scaled it up. Let's do that. Select groups. Edge rings. There we go. Got both of those. There. Right there. We are going to clamp overlaps, which will prevent me from uh, breaking the mesh at all. We are going to... No, actually, we'll just keep those sharp. Uh, we're also going to cut those segments down to... Two should be fine. Approximately sized. Much smoother. Very nice. Lightning Brony, this will be archived. It will be a VOD available for rewatch later on. Here a little bit because solar panel felt a bit small compared to the rest of his friends. Good stuff. Good stuff. You, 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 you. And then go back and make sure it's like you first. Shift D, scale X, negative one. Oh, wait. Scale Y, negative one. There we go. Let's move you into approximate position. There we go. Okay, and that one will maintain all of the modifiers and parenting and everything that we set here. So, for example, if I grab this, all of that rotates just fine. Let's see from there. 
Oh god, I, so I know we were saying Cake Planet. I'm tempted to just slap a cake on the front of the ship. Uh, <laughs> but nah, nah, I'll, I'll, I'll make, I'll make the a ship made out of that. candy, and it's headed to Cake Planet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. So we're going to press I. Nope, not I to inside spaces. Whoops. We're going to press E to extrude, S to scale. Gonna move that out on the x-axis a little bit. E to extrude along the x-axis. E to extrude, S to scale. Gonna go up a good bit. Oh, thank you for the donation from Anonymous. I appreciate it. Oh. E to extrude along the x. And then this will be kind of our start of our command bridge. E to extrude along the X, and then scale down a decent amount. There we go. And then uh, we'll build sort of, let's do like a big docking connector or something up here. So extrude, scale down a bit, extrude along the X, and forward, and then we'll have sort of a little lip right at the end, so we'll like extrude, scale, extrude along the X. Scale Back down, actually scale even further, extrude along the X on the interior direction. Extrude scale. That'll yeah, that'll basically be us right there. And then let's grid fill that. Adjust that to match nicely. We can go ahead and extrude that, inset, screw back, out of a window, kinda. Get a bit of a door going so we can inset. Actually, nah, nah don't inset. Screwed. Scale on the, whoops, scale on the Y axis. That ah, didn't look great. Yeah, that looks okay. We'll put some lights in there in a bit or something. Let's see, we can go these two. Now let's do four by fours. Four. There we go. Inset here. Extrude there. Scale them down. These will be our like big docking clamp wedges. Hold period again. Change that to median point. Pull them in a bit. Not too much, just a little bit. And we'll kind of repeat that, but inverse on these parts. Go in there with I. Extrude back. Scale them down a little bit. And then period, media, or individual origin. Scale them down there too. Got a little bit of intersection there. That is okay. Go to edge select, alt there. Scale up that sum. There we go, getting a little semblance of a docking port going on there. How you managed to compose 2D and 3D models. Uh, so from Ghostface, Nikolai, uh, do you guys plan on making a video of how you managed to compose 2D animation and 3D models together? That would be interesting, but essentially um, all we do is... Uh... Excuse me, let me get my chair forward so I'm not hovering awkwardly over my microphone. Um... What we do is uh, we will kind of rough animate something in 2D, just kind of like put some sort of indication of like, oh, this is roughly where I want the object to go. And then we export that out as an MOV, import that into Blender with the whatever object we're going to be working with uh, into the camera, because you can actually set MOVs inside the camera for reference purposes. 
And then we animate the 3D object to kind of like match whatever we did in 2D. Then we export that out again using uh, render animation. We export out a PNG sequence and then import that PNG sequence back into Toon Boom or whatever software that the animator is using. And that's how you can composite um, 2D and 3D get 2D and 3D together. Ah, excuse me. <laughs> That won't be part of this tutorial, but um, it's not that difficult. If you uh, ever import PNG sequences into uh, your 2D software, it's essentially like the same thing. Just you export your 3D animation as a PNG sequence and put it back in. Probably want to make sure that whatever you're animating, though, is going to be exported as a, a transparent PNG so that you don't have like other elements like the background and the axis and stuff like that, you you want to make sure that it's like its own individual element. So, yeah. True. Ghostface, no, we don't do the 3D stuff first, not unless it's something like uh, a car running around and the characters are like hanging onto the car or something. But uh, even then, it would be preferable to at least rough it out in 2D first, just to like brainstorm what you're going to do and see if you can match that in 3D. No, we're gonna do the creepy one first. Mm -hmm. Ah, that there we go. I heard a burb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hello, we friends. I do indeed scream. Rip. Yes, Isaac, I can hear you. I hear you. Enzo, I hear you too. <laughs> Just adding Sorry about that. More I will mute. <laughs> the... Oh no, you are all good. Adding little bits of detail here and there can never have too much. Let's see. Let's give it a get a little funky with the texture. Let's go rendered view real quick. Oh, Harley. Thank you. Uh, let's keep it kind of there. So I do want to do actually something similar that we did to the sky. Ghostface Nicole says, makes sense. I think I remember seeing you use the grease brush with 3D. Yes, that's a, a I think it's called grease pencil and blender. You can use that to sort of rough things out in 3D, but I find it um, best used in, in my particular case, uh, best used as a way of um, roughing in a, just a drawing of whatever I'm going to be working with and then parenting that to an object that's going to be moving around. And then using that as like a, a reference, basically, for scale. That way I know what the actual proper perspective of a character is if it's uh, moving through the environment. But oftentimes the animators don't need to do that. They'll simply um, draw what they need to draw and then uh, attach it to a peg and just move it that way. A, a peg in two boom, that is. And then the peg, they'll just track that manually to the car. There's a lot of different ways you could do. You could go about it. Grease pencil is a really cool feature that is uh, definitely getting better and better. It's just not quite at the power level of a uh, tube boom, one could say. <laughs> but it's getting there, and it's definitely at a point where you can use it to rough things in. Babel, have you tried the new line modifier? line art modifier yet. I have not. I, uh, my head is so deeply buried in production that I do not have the time to play with new tools, unfortunately. 
I've sadly not used it yet either. Mm -hmm. Possibly should. So what I'm do currently doing is uh, adding sort of just procedurally scattered little red lights across the hull. We get to making these look more proper in a moment. Let's make some greebles. Let's, let's go back to solid view. Greebles. Yeah, that is that is the technical term. <laughs> let's add a cube. Okay, so chat, give me some ideas uh, for greebles. They're basically things that we can slap on the outside for various little bits of detail. There's like hatches and fuel tanks and RCS and tons of random crap. So like for example, uh, let's let's see, how do we want to do this greeble? So this greeble will sort of be like a, a window, maybe hatch or something like that. I do have a greeble generator, but I specifically am not using it uh, in, in return, um, or not in return, but so that uh, people can see tools that they will have used to right out the box, because the greeble generator I have is one that you have to pay for. Do... Little, uh, little cat faces or something. <laughs> well, it's totally nonsensical, but... <laughs> Lasers, <laughs> says Hankbot. <laughs> yes, guns. Covered in guns. <laughs> well, everyone, welcome to... Bunny uh, shape fact. hatch. <laughs> Actually, speaking welcome of to enough, or How to enough. Conquer the Universe tutorial. <laughs> I was gonna say I haven't heard Ashley talk in uh in quite a while. I hope he's doing okay. Yeah, there was a, a question from somebody who wanted to know how you were doing, Ashley, if you are there. Possible she well, stepped Ash away. Ashley has dead. She has surrendered uh the title oh, she died. of Lizards That's it. versus Rabbits to Lizards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ashley's dead, sorry guys, no more honeycast. <laughs> Laser faced cats. Oh no. Oh, God. Isn't that just Victor? <laughs> just basically, yes. <laughs> the glare beam. <laughs> Ashley left to get groceries. One would hope. Uh, a crone one to one asks, "Hey, Nuke, can you turn on the screencast keys add-on so we can see the buttons you're pressing when you're working fast like this?" Oh, Do you have uh, that? Yes, uh, that's a good idea. Thank you for the suggestion. Uh oh, what's it called? I've never actually turned that on before. Screencast. I don't I don't know where that is because I just did that. Uh, let me see if I have to grab it externally. And keyboard, open right side panel, screen guest keys tab. Oh wait, is this over here? I don't think I've ever seen it over here. Hmm. Uh, Sad Cat uh, thinks maybe it's not there by default. It's not included in default anymore. Says, uh, oh, Maduro. it's not included in yeah. default. Oh, yep, I just found it. Good mm -hmm. stuff. Okay, so let me grab this from there. Releases real quick. Einstein McKenzie asks, what song are you listening to? I don't know. It's one of the playlists that I assembled for our streams uh, from the music we purchased mm -hmm. from Toon Tank. So it's just one of those. Um, there's four mm -hmm. or five in the playlist that play on loop. 
Okay, so now screencast keys. Turn on. There it is. That yeah. That is really small. Yeah, that is incredibly tiny. Can it be made bigger? Hey, look at that. That's much more legible. Hell yeah. Yeah, that works. Oh, I can't make it any bigger than that. That's the biggest it goes. Hmm. Get the hatch going, get our auto smooth on. Let's see, how do we want to do this? We'll inset you, distribute you back a bit, do some windows, and move the door. Uh, now, how do you model Sandra Bullock so we can put her in there too? I'm good. I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give our agent a call. We'll see what we can do. Actually, no, we'll leave this one as a square. Inset. Uh, maybe extrude. Maybe the inside can be beveled. So, like I mentioned earlier, Greeble is just random details that messy the surface like this has a nice clean surface going across it currently so we really want to mess that up uh so we are going to use the greeble system to do so let's select here snap curse is selected let's go ahead and add a uv sphere yeah that there works Go ahead and set, screw down. Yep. Go down a little bit. Is that a laser? Can, uh, <laughs> if you want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, personally, I was thinking some kind of indiscriminate fuel tank. <laughs> I mean, can't anything be a weapon if you're creative enough? Fair, fair. Today on, I promise I'm not a bad person. We've got some kind of random fuel tank looking thing. Let's do. Is there a, a USB C port? <laughs> there is not a USB C that we can port. Charge our... we, we, can... we have to be able to charge our, our uh, spaceship, though. How are we going to plug it in to the USB C to the USB port? Well, I gotta give it a lightning cable. Right? Yes. Is it cross compatible with uh, with Macintosh? <laughs> Can I hook my i my iPhone to it? Does it play Spotify? <laughs> <laughs> Is it 5G <laughs> compatible? Yeah. <laughs> Is, does the space station get 5G, Newt? <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know if uh, they got the if we got the Verizon partnership or not. <laughs> A license plate. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, a license plate. A license plate is a good one. <laughs> uh, make it like the opening to Spaceballs. Yeah. <laughs> is it compatible with Commodore sixty four as Citizen Zombie production? Cat asked, does it have a VGA port? <laughs> <laughs> How many HDMI uh, connections does it have, dude? I need at least three. The sad thing is I'm seriously tempted to just install uh, a bunch of different <laughs> like ports or port shaped things now. Because I mean it works. <laughs> it absolutely works. I want a nine pin uh, connection. We got that. Does a, does a terrified astronaut count as a greeble? <laughs> <laughs> How many kerbals can we attach to this thing? Just, we should just add like an XLR interface onto it so it can get the good sound. <laughs> Hankbot asks, does it have Wi Fi? <laughs> Is Minecraft Steve agreeable? <laughs> Well, that would be a very easy greeble to make, wouldn't it, Nate? Yeah, That's just cubes. a handful of cubes. <laughs> it's just cubes. Crone asks, oh, how about rabbit ears, as in radio antenna? Actually, a different antennae would be uh, an interesting thing to add. Little, little dishes to pick up signals and stuff. True. Yeah. Let's see what I can. How do large that. is this ship? It is bigger than a bread box. Maybe. Uh, a little bit, a little bit. What is it this? Is... A spaceship for ants? I mean, hell, by its by the current that. size, every one of these squares is a square meter. So. Oh dear. It's about a football field and a well, half. <laughs> uh, it's. It's a space station for mice. A proton pack. <laughs> Look at all these little random doohickeys everywhere. Karan asks, can we get a single antenna with a jack-in-the-box ball at the end? <laughs> oh, God. Jack is getting inventive. <sighs> I mean, I like it. <laughs> Let's see, a couple more creeples, a couple more creeples. Let's do a... Like antenna? A uh... Oh, vent, yeah. Antenna would work, I just don't want it to be too big of one, because these will be scattered all over. But yeah, we can do a small antenna. Yeah. Um, so actually, let's see, let's do... Start that from a cylinder.
He'll do something a little fancy. Easel Rock says, just don't tell Elon, knowing him he'd be crazy enough to take all our bad ideas to heart. Oh, don't get us started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How about a pair of AA batteries? <laughs> oh, Carlin. that could be cute. <laughs> it really is a space station for mice. Dim says, hi guys, just caught the stream. What are we doing today? Doing the 3D. Space. Newt is showing us how to build a space station. Spaceship. Yeah, this is a blender tutorial. More or less. Uh, yeah, that's that's fair. That. The more or less yeah. is fair. Um... <laughs> Currently, uh, uh, we insert the lack of cube into it. Sorry, I didn't mean that in like a bad way. <laughs> no, 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 that's fair. But th there's not a lot of discussion going on right now as far as what's going on because I'm just using the techniques we spoke about before to just make a bunch of random little shapes. Mm -hmm. Newt is currently building uh, greebles to stick around the spaceship, basically to decorate it. Yeah. So, uh, so Newt, how many lack of cubes are we going to fit around this thing? I know it's hmm. a very difficult thing to model, but I mean, it should, it's like it's like a satellite, isn't it? It should be just orbiting a giant lack of cube. <laughs> oh god! Someone that should be uh, the moon. Drop someone. <laughs> do me a favor. Drop in voice chat a good picture of the lack of cube. Uh... I mean, <laughs> is there such a thing as there a good picture? Is there a good the picture of a, cube? of a wood box? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I can it's though. Uh, it is a a cube uh, made of wood. Uh, <laughs> the wood is lighter colored. That, put one enter extrude minus point one enter and stuff one one enter I, I did throw an image in voice chat if you want to use it. It's not, uh, I, I'd have to remove the background from the actual lack of cube photos. Nah, that's perfect. That's okay. perfect. <laughs> it was terrible as we remember. <laughs> okay, so here, real quick, let's save the project again. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so let's make a procedural planet on a box. Um, <laughs> let's do new material. And five pipe designs and duplicate them and place around the ship. Uh, yeah, I was about to get to, <laughs> to pipes and wiring. Um, so let's do, those are principles. So let's see, let's start with a Musgrave. Further, let's do a color ramp. So we'll do a Musgrave height into base color. There we go. I'm gonna do a uh, multi-fractal. Yeah. 
that. Well, that's sort of a green space thing going on. Just getting the colors set up. We want whites for our grays for our mountain ranges. We want our whites for our snow caps. Okay. That. Do we have access to the bevel node? EZV does have access to the bevel node. That's actually uh, how I did a lot of the work with uh, the farfetch stuff. Oh, right. Who's going to do it with the 2D? No, we do it with the 2D. Oh, wait, I know why. That. Then do this. Woo! Okay. Mm. There we go, that's what I wanted. design more. Don't worry, it'll be less blob <laughs> in a moment. Like I miss Nude added a cube and is fiddling with the shader. Yeah, I'm currently fiddling with the shader because people asked it to be orbiting a cube. I mean, I could just make, I could just make it a block of wood, if they'd prefer. Would you prefer the cube be a like a planet or a block of wood? <laughs> I'd say the the lacquer cube uh, should be the moon of the cake planet. Ooh, fair. That is not the material I thought it was. I'm grabbing my procedural uh, planet material from... My procedural planet generator. There it is. <laughs> okay, this one's a bit more complex. So if folks want in the future, I can do a tutorial specifically on this thing right here. This is a procedural planet generator that I made a while back. It's not too complicated as far as this goes. Um, it does have cloud animation and everything. Uh, but we, we're not going to go over that one right now. Um, if you do want to go back to the VOD, uh, you can pause that and recreate that node tree. Let's see, for now, I do want to be... Actually, wait, no, I shouldn't do that. Let me just go here. I just generated. which combination is the... Nope, that just... Get rid of my clouds. Where'd my clouds go? One of these makes it nice and perfectly seamless. Now 
There we go. Okay. And that, yep, that gets the nice wrap. Cool. Okay. So there we go. We have our we have our cube world, uh, which will be orbited by cube moon. Actually, we don't have a camera or anything yet. Yeah, now, now I'm kind of jumping around and what I was planning on doing. Uh, so for folks curious how I snapped to the camera, although it said on screen, control, numpad zero, snaps to the camera. Or if you don't have a numpad, just click on this little camera here on the right side. My camera to view. God, remember what? Remember what you said at the beginning, Tracy, of this becoming uh, absolutely insane. It's on brand. <laughs> what happened to my cylinders? If it didn't go off the rails, I'd I'd be suspicious. So let's see. So we have vent, fuel tanks, hatch, antenna. Um, let's do some pipes. So let's do some pipes. Editor. Vertices. No, we'll just start with a 90 degree turn. Snapping, vertice to vertice. We want it by closest. Not snapping to it. So we will move via the 3D cursor. There we go. Snap that there. A little bit of a pipe going. Yeah. Move that. Merge by distance. Where's that vertice? Good stuff. Okay, so we can go ahead and tab these edges. Extrude this on the Z. Give us a little bit of a solidify modifier. Side. There we go. Give us our first pipe. And then we can just modify this as need be. And 
We're still on rails. What are you going to name your ship? Oh god, what did we what did we agree to name the ship? I already forgot. We haven't yet. <laughs> Okay, and that technically is more than enough greebles for the entire vessel as it stands. So we're going to go up here, we have snapping on, we're going to select face, closest, align rotation to target, and effect movement. So now if I select this guy, and shift D, I'm holding it, he will auto snap to wherever I'm holding him. Um, we do actually want to do center. There we go. Now we'll do it at a center. I'm actually going to select all of these. Oh god, <laughs> not the planet. And scale them down pretty substantially. There we go. And now we'll just gr get greebling. So, 50. Actually, let me adjust the origin of these. Is he placed a little low? Selected objects at origin, origin to 3D cursor. Oh, whoop. origin, origin to 3D cursor. So what I'm doing now is I'm lowering the origin of these to their base so that when we attach them, they attach nice and right on their backside. Oop, don't delete that. And again, if anyone has like a, a specific question about certain, you know, modifier or anything they want me to approach uh, that they think, you know, might fit into this session, I would be happy to include it. some greebling going for real this time <laughs> now that we actually have a nice and properly but attachment locations actually even then that is still now it's a little low gotta love it Much better, it's starting to properly align. Nice. Fable when Ashley is back, can you tell her that I questioned for her when I wanted to see her if she comes back? I think I had 
handful of folks have questions for Ashley if and when she returns. Okay, I'll, uh, let's see if... Let's see what's happening. folks can see you just take the grievals that you make slap them on adjust as necessary and then in a minute we'll uh extrapolate this even further when we array this uh much more massively Me would like you to know that Seraphine, her kitten, is attacking the screen while this is playing. Oh. Well, I'm glad she enjoys. Good job, kitten. <laughs> kitten doing kitten job. Okay, so then we can take these objects, grab, 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 grab. Join. Objects, uh, Oh, thank you for the donation, Kaitao. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Raced in McKenzie asks, I've heard that Seraphine, a uh, lackadaisy Seraphine, was inspired by the famous Mary Laveau. Is that true? Um, a little bit. I mean, she's influenced by a lot of different things. Um, she has a bit of Marie Laveau uh, wrapped in there. I mean, she claims lineage to Marie Laveau and Jean Lafitte. Uh, that's kind of her. <laughs> she's, she's like a... Uh, um, a pirate and a mambo all in one, um, <laughs> according to her own personal mythology. Um, I think probably her declarations are of dubious um, veracity, but <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's maybe says something about her ambitions in life. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she's a little bit, a little bit Marie Laveau, a little bit Josephine Baker, a little bit uh, Gladys Bentley. Um, A little bit uh, Marlene and Dietrich. <laughs> there. Like right now, basically, we're just scattering the surface with everything. Uh, so we can go ahead and actually apply the... Nope, that's the planet. Just our metal material. That's looking pretty rad, dude. Uh, what's your question about Rocky, uh, Neko Yui singer?
So actually, folks, you can see that if I want to duplicate this and, you know, scale it or whatever, but there's an incline right here. We can do, we're going to do the geometry. Move it back a little bit. And if you're concerned about, oh, won't this look repetitive with a... Uh, with all of these same pieces or whatever, at scale, when you actually zoom back, you cannot tell. We'll go ahead and select a little bit of all the edges. We'll press O to turn on proportional editing. Oh, whoop, Kofi supporter bought a coffee for Noteworks and said, no, sir, don't mean maybe. I don't know what that means. I do not know what you mean, no. person. <laughs> I'm sorry. Was there something I that was a maybe? <laughs> there was a... Maybe referencing some past part of the conversation that we all have forgotten yeah. at this point. <laughs> it was a, oh, the, the, the maybe he helped. Don't mean maybe. Yeah. Oh. It's probably. <laughs> would he Neto survive uses, in outer space? <laughs> yeah. Asking, would Rocky survive in outer space, or would he get sick from all the floating atmosphere? I don't think there'd be a whole lot of atmosphere out there. Yeah, there's, that's the thing with space. <laughs> there's no atmosphere. I mean, there's, like, I guess, ambiance. <laughs> in a sense. In space, um, sugar doesn't help you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's, there's fewer things to interact with, so maybe he and everybody else would be safer in space. Uh, Ashley says that she is back. Hi, Ashley. Hello, I am back. I apologize. Hey, no, it's good. fine. Like you just for The being spaceship here. has evolved so much. What the fuck? It has. Look, it's yeah. got disco panels now. Is that a square planet? <laughs> yeah, that's maybe. the lack of cube. <laughs> It's a cube. It has a cube world. world. So, Chad, if you guys have questions for Ashley, go ahead and pause at them. While she is oh here. yes, give me all you of your, give me all of your burning questions. News if it's burning. anything about 3D, I will have nothing to say because I am terrible at it. Other than praising Newt for his uh, his assists on Farfetched. Yes, Newt does yeah. an amazing job. He's good. He does very Our good. I, I've been seeing his. Uh... Why is it lizards? <laughs> yes. <laughs> don't make me take that donation back. <laughs> on one hand, please no. On the other hand, I don't think you can on Kofi. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Raced and Mackenzie. I'm gonna assume this is a question for for Ashley. Although if anybody else wants to answer, in your opinion, who is the sexiest female character, Mitzi or Seraphine? <laughs> uh, Seraphine. Yeah, she's better than me. Yeah, she's <laughs> I think both of them could kick my ass, but Seraphine would do it in a much more sadistic way. Yeah. We don't have time to unpack all of that. <laughs> <laughs> it would definitely be more fun, I think. <laughs> Depends. What kind of fun are you talking about? I think Mitzi <laughs> scares me more. Mitzi can set the guys after you. Seraphine will just do it herself. Like, if Seraphine eviscerates me, and it's in the way that, like, a mom would, like, be disappointed and angry with you. That's oh, a lot scarier. Emotional, emotionally destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that this, the definition of who's hotter is based on, like, what kind of torment would you appreciate <laughs> more? My definition of what's idea. hotter is what's more threatening. <laughs> And we all learned a little bit more about Ashley that day. Listen, my therapist gets paid very well. Let's do this. Kron says, should... next time on Newt Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> I've been admiring Newt's work on Farfetch so far. I've been, I get to see the behind the scenes of... Uh, everything going on and the van that he built i'm like oh damn that custom shader on it too fucking just mwah. oh yeah am i allowed to show the van on stream yeah go for it we've shown it before Let's throw the van up where is van version 3 b underscore fine <laughs> 
How many underscore finals are there, Newt? Uh, We've uh, had a few finals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't I know it. We thought the car, the four-door was done so many times, and then I was like, oh, wait, no, this thing. Oh, wait, no, this thing. The four-door has been through seven iterations uh, <laughs> before the final one. 3D is such a, just such a dense process. You always, like, miss things. Mm -hmm. You think you catch is. everything, and then you don't. Or there's just always ways to improve. Oh, yeah. At some point, you have to be like, I guess that's just how it is for right now. And you make a mental note to uh, fix this or that if you ever get the chance again. It's still loading in more of the shader. <laughs> Give it a minute. <laughs> The Papa Swirl Head terrifies me, says Fizzy Disney <laughs> Studios. Yeah. Good. Mission Didn't somebody already do, like, a, a... What was it? A Rule 63 on the Papa Swirl? Mama Swirl. Somebody certainly did. And then Jonah Scott, the voice of Lego She and Beastars, his girlfriend is cosplaying Mama Swirl. Oh, oh no. my god. Oh, dear. It just, it just, just wonderful. that there's I adore that her. much chaos already. <laughs> Also, folks who are wondering, this will not be a part of the tutorial today, but folks who are wondering <laughs> why there's an exterior and the inside is green and there's an interior scene and the outside is green is because when the van was designed, there's like wheel wells and some volumetric issues between the two parts of the van that if we go to the interior layer, you'll notice aren't here. This is actually <laughs> about two feet longer, and there are no wheel wells than the outside. So I had to make the van a portal, basically. Magic. It is, uh, considering the subject matter of Farfetch'd, this is just on brand, honestly. It's just a TARDIS. It's a subtly <laughs> magical van, and I feel like that's actually, like, in character. It's like, <laughs> so, it's like to have one of the characters point out something, it's just like, wait a second. Where do the I wheels just go? Than tiered, yeah, where the wheels go? <laughs> like, it, like Warren's One day. just on the van, and he's just like he he changes the tire, and then he bashes the bumper, and he's like, oh no, did that like ding the interior? He goes to the interior to check. He's like, wait, wait a second, wait a minute. <laughs> How did I not notice this before? Yeah, Warren has like, a he, mental breakdown, and then just never tells anyone. He never tells anybody because he's like embarrassed that he didn't notice, <laughs> and he doesn't. He's afraid that someone else might have noticed and that they noticed before him. And he's too insecure about somehow missing something about his baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for the yeah, smoothie, Clint. A... Thank you. I just got this is a, a uh, good example of uh, how 3D is useful. We're using 3D for uh, one of our more complex objects. It's going to need to be animated for the sake of rotoscoping or just straight up rendering it out to save our animators a lot of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's this fucking that up? What is rule 63? That's just when you do like a gender bent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Fizzy Dizzy asks, if they did notice, would they be surprised about the TARDIS nature of the van? I think that by the time they would notice, they'd be too tired of everything else that's happened to really care. They'd just be like, ah, <laughs> oh, weird. Hopefully that doesn't affect the warranty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the idea of like a subtly cryptid thing. It's like, <laughs> it's weird, but in just like a tiny way. That uh, gets overlooked. I feel like yeah. that's some real SCP shit, too. I was about to say, a lot of SCPs yeah. are like that, and I always love it. Yeah, but the best SCPs are the ones that aren't just, like, world-destroying, like, demonic monsters and things. They're just, like, something subtly off. One of my and favorites it takes you a is while the to Infinite Ikea. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that the Infinite Ikea has, like, really intense lore behind it at this point. Yeah, there's, like, whole civilizations of people who have built up within within its walls there is a 
I have an idea for an SCP, uh, which if somebody steals, uh, good job, now I don't have to write it, um, that I just want to call the infinite sink. The, mm -hmm. the like, the perpetually dirty sink um, that always has dirty dishes in it. It's it's basically always has some full of dirty dishes, but it's only activated when there's at least three roommates. <laughs> So you can never tell exactly who is responsible for the dirty ditches. Its entire goal is just to tear households apart. <laughs> it deactivates once one of the roommates leaves. And so, like, the other two assume, oh, yeah, that was the guy who was leaving all the dishes and he was lying. But no, he wasn't. He left because it was like, I kept getting accused of leaving dirty ditches. I couldn't stand it. The true agent of chaos. <laughs> My thought is that it's actually just like uh, a sort of a portal to like uh, another dimension where like some monsters have a restaurant and they put the dirty dishes in the portal <laughs> to get clean. <laughs> and, and like, so you don't notice at first what's going on until you start recognizing, if you ever do, that some of the dishes are a little bit different than what you previously had. So this does lead one to assume that somewhere, someone's clean dishes are disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a cupboard SCP somewhere that just devours dishes. Oh. Yes, they get, they appear in tandem. <laughs> I think the it's world's most prominent... System. You're like, why are there no clean dishes? Are, are all the dishes dirty? I could have sworn I had more bowls than this. I think the world's most common SCP is just a dryer that's duplicated itself a million times and just sends socks to different dimensions. Mm hmm Yes, yeah, the the infinite sink uh, is actually a relative of that. <laughs> it's, it's strongly suspected that it's connected to, like, there's just a suspicion that some dryers, like, eat socks, but they actually have never been able to find an actual example of it. The, the possible existence of the of the sock consuming dryer is implied to be real by the existence of the infinite sink <laughs> but they have not found it yet have you ever seen like not... videos where people take their dryers apart and in between like where the rotating thing is and the body of the dryer they just find like a metric fuck ton of socks and it's like there they are that's where they are oh my god yeah that's where they go they fucking How? slip. They fu like there's Are videos socks of it. Quantum objects. The, so when a dryer, when a dryer drum rotates, like specifically the ones that rotate on their side, there's a tiny gap between like the outside shell and the rotating drum inside. It'll just slip in between there. That's nuts. And Juicy says, that's a particularly evil SCP. Thank you! Because I was, I've was i been thinking for a while, I was like, if I were to do an SCP, what would I do? And just my idea is the infinite sink. But uh, <laughs> I don't know how to get in good with the SCP people so that I could, like, make an article or whatever. Because I know that you need to have, like, a certain reputation before anything even goes in. It's like, you can't just make up shit and just paste it in there. This isn't the, the OG SCP anymore. Not that that was particularly good either. So everybody would just put their demon OC in there. There's a lot of big titty anime women in the old SCPs. <laughs> when it was Nobody a free for all. Them. What they should have done was just be like make an amalgam of all the big titty anime women and just make that an SCP. Just a giant. <laughs> Characters design tits first. First you draw the tits, then you draw everything else. That's your art tutorial. Anyway, welcome to Blender, everyone. <laughs> In this tutorial, right, we will not be explaining how to model that. No, but we will completely unrelated teach you how to do basic soft body physics. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he knew, can we give jiggle? this entire spaceship soft body physics? <laughs> Do you want me to okay. make this an okay, actual, wiggly... like, wobbly noodle? Yes. <laughs> yes! Oh my god, yes. I want to- I want a wiggly spaceship. Every well, I can't- like the, I can't wait for it to crash your computer. Wob, wob. <laughs> Did you save? 
Uh, yes, I have saved. Um, I'm actually going to... Or just give everything cloth physics. <laughs> actually, the Neko Yui Singer asks, has gotten a lot Excuse better. me. Excuse me, what does Rocky's name stand for? Uh, his actual name is Rourke, but nobody calls him that. Yeah. So who who, who refers to anybody as Rourke? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a bird noise. <laughs> Rourke. <laughs> Rourke. Did you come up with like the name Rourke first, or did you come up with the name Rocky first? And then we're like, wait, I have to no, give it's him, like, it's retrofitted because Rocky's named after a cat who was Aww. named after. Yeah, he's named after my childhood cat who was named after Rocky Raccoon from the Beatles. There was song. a oh, there was an Rocky. actual Rocky, and he really was that way. Yeah, it's really not <laughs> an exaggeration. It's... No. The stories that you have of this cat are just freaking delightful. Yeah, he was, it's like exactly the kind of cat I love. He was like an amazingly stupid, smart cat who just, yeah, he was just a constant source of entertainment and hijinks. And, um, <laughs> you told me how you nearly jumped into a fire. Yeah, we had to oh pull back and jumping into the... We had a fire going in our fireplace. We were like, it was a very like idyllic wrapping Christmas presents and and like the the extra trimmings from um, the wrapping. We would crinkle it up and throw it in the fire. Uh, and he was just like crazy for crinkled paper sounds. And you just come running and if you and you chase after it. Um, and we had to like hold it, like physically restrain him from leaping into the fire anytime we throw something in there. It was like, <laughs> and so we caught on that. Oh, he really loves like crinkled paper. So like throwing paper around was was his thing and he'd just like go fetch it and bring it back Aww. now somebody needs to draw rocky trying to dive into the fireplace <laughs> <laughs> i feel like a, a child rocky in particular would have uh, definitely done that for probably the same reasons <laughs> I mean, maybe, yeah, I just think, like, oh, I can reach inside. I'll just, if I just pull it out fast enough, it'll be fine. <laughs> that's how he forgot Singe the first time. Yeah, that's how he lost his eyebrows the first time. <laughs> Nina was hoping they wouldn't grow back, and so they came in thicker. <laughs> it's just like when you shave. <laughs> they just, yeah, they just come back stronger than before. <laughs> it's like, uh-oh. <laughs> that's why he has such formidable oh. brows. Rocky Sam's eyebrows, though, it's like taking away Samson's power by clipping a bit of his hair. <laughs> yes, he loses it's all like of it. He, he's, yeah. he's only invincible because of his eyebrows. He, he loses some of his his his, uh, his beans. He's full of beans. He loses a little bit of beanage when those eyebrows are totally singed off. <laughs> it's like a temporary neutering. Oh, God. <laughs> temporary. Temporary. Ralston McKenzie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ralston McKenzie asks, "What inspired you to make Mordecai Jewish?" Uh, I'm not sure. I just I started working on the character and just like thinking about his backstory and just I don't know. I got interested in like uh, Jewish Harlem and things like that from uh, New York City history, and it's like oh, yeah, that's and I mean there were a lot of. Uh, like it wrapped up in prohibition there were a lot of uh jewish gangs and things and that seemed like um like i was just kind of exploring like the different types of uh of people who were you know involved it wasn't just you know italian mob like we so uh often fall back on when it comes to like it was everybody historical you know um gang shenanigans um everybody had their had their hands on uh like that that prohibition um alcohol so <laughs> everybody was in on that racket so uh yeah i just wanted to kind of as a jew with family members uh shockingly close to how mordecai is i'd say it would shock me if he wasn't jewish instead <laughs> <laughs> but like of course he's jewish i mean look at it <laughs> Yeah, Wait. it became yeah. Um, very much a part of his character. And... <laughs> I've had a share. I've been joking with uh, Tracy frequently about his uh, 
his uh sensitivities to certain like foods and things and the irony of that given his uh yeah his he would not have a great time passover is miserable of, for him a lot of the cuisine yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the bitter tears and uh and stuff of the of uh <laughs> of your people <laughs> like all the representational food is felt very strongly by him <laughs> yeah he too has bitter tears but I just that he, really I watching like Newt add all this detail to the spaceship, and I'm just, just like, Whoa. Fun. This is the decoration part. Yeah. Yeah. This, I, this, I, this I insist. Part is... Yeah. I was just saying, this part is yeah purely decoration. This is just having a good time. This feels very zen. Yes. A little bit. Yeah. I I do insist though. Is like I feel like Mordecai would be the kind of person who would really enjoy gefilte fish. <laughs> It's like a fish meatloaf. It's a very even texture. It's like fish pate. It's basically yeah. Cat. It is basically cat food, which is why you can't. <laughs> he has to be into it. I I enjoy gefilte fish. By the way, I'm not making fun of it. I, it's quite good. Yeah, it's no, actually, I would, with horse would radish, but that. he like, like that. It's like yeah. it's it can't be that far off from tuna. Just a bit more like, like consistency, <laughs> evened out. I think, but. When I come to visit you, should I uh, bring a jar? <laughs> I don't sure. know. You could probably yeah. get it here. I mean, I don't think yeah, probably. I don't know that tra it travels particularly well. Fish usually. Of course it does. Yeah. It's in a jar. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's the whole point. It's a jar to. Uh, yeah, it's to preserve. preserved. Oh, yeah. yeah. Raised in Mackenzie says, interesting because I know that most kings were, were Jewish and there were black Jews in Harlem. Fact, fun fact. Yes, being Jewish does not mean that you are necessarily look a certain way right no it's yeah, uh... common misconception by a lot of people there are i there are quite a few people who are black and are jewish i know some personally i wouldn't say most gangs were jewish though there were no very prominent ones not at all <laughs> i mean the jewish population wasn't that big it couldn't possibly be the no. case that most gangs were jewish but um... no but there were prominent ones, yeah, like uh, yes. the Purple Gang was very much uh, in control of the alcohol coming into the country from Canada over the uh, um, Detroit River mm -hmm. and uh, Great Lakes. Yeah, they were uh, they were a scary bunch, yeah, they were, even Al Capone was afraid of them. Uh, Toomey asks, uh, would Mordecai eat cat kosher? I, I feel yeah. like he would be very insistent on keeping kosher. Yeah, it's all about would. rules. So um, yeah, he likes. I think he likes the structure of having a rule system, uh, kind of already in place for him. And I don't think he would do it really necessarily out of adherence to like. It wouldn't do it really for spiritual reasons so much. I don't think. Um, no, but, there's a lot yeah. of there's a lot of uh, Jewish customs that uh, one will keep to even if not for like the original religious reasons. Besides, mm -hmm. Mordecai is fundamentally violating the whole "though shall not kill" thing, right? <laughs> yeah. But he also knows what the local um, local pork uh, eat for, <laughs> so yeah. he wouldn't uh, wouldn't be down with doing no. that. You're not into barbecue. Mm -mm. Too many flavors, anyway. Sound on my little Z. Uh... Is it Bobby? Says, am I pronouncing that right? Says, will Mitzi be able to keep the crew together in the rigors of space? Will Rocky once again set fire to the <laughs> engine pod? I, These I, questions will be answered in Black Lack Daisy the movie too. Black Daisy in space, yes, that's definitely. <laughs> have you guys, concept. have you guys done in character fucking uh, Lack Daisy Among Us? Uh, no, I mean, but that would, be, for it, that would be. That would be great. Mean, I would be totally entertained yeah. thoroughly by <laughs> if, that. If the VAs are interested in it, we'll happily set it up. Let's say. It's like we have talked about it though, but we didn't want to like uh 
make it. Yeah, we don't. Were I no, that's yeah. a big, <laughs> yeah. that's big a ask big to be to like, do. here, yeah. come play a game, but also perform through the whole thing. It's a little, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we to... asked them to do that for Uno, and uh, and we were like, okay, let, that, that was that was nice and all, but we don't want to like take advantage yeah. of people. Yeah, so. we'd have to have a good excuse. Like a habit like, maybe of it. maybe we could do it for like a charity stream or something at some point. Um, it's a very funny so that... hypothetical, though. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It would be pretty be... good. Or um, Project Winter, but everybody's in character would be even better. Project Winter <laughs> with everyone in character would be insane. Oh my god! Oh, that'd be so good. <laughs> we've been we've been messing around with the idea of far fetched in character D and D. Ooh. <laughs> would you get past character creation even? This is just this is be like like that would be the whole no thing. there would be too much arguing nobody would finish their characters exactly <laughs> that would that would be the entire episode but that would be entertaining unto itself so mm -hmm. it would be a very good troll <laughs> Neko uh, Toombi is allowed anybody is allowed to like comment like four times in a row it's fine so long as you're participating in conversation. Yes, Ashley is here. Yes. Yeah. No, no, she's not. Don't lie. <laughs> Who's that? This Who, is just where? a procedurally generated Ashley. Beep boop werewolf. Uh, uh, art is hard. Eh. <laughs> art is hard. Hankbot is saying, I'm imagining Rocky as a bard in D and D. D and D. He just is one. <laughs> <laughs> Bard IRL. <laughs> is that every actor though? Yeah. Every every three kid is just bar Bard IRL. <laughs> yes, Ashley is here, Neko. I got like a 90s mix uh, playing on my Spotify that I'm just enjoying the oh, <laughs> number of times nice. I've just been taking segments of like these like songs I barely remember that suddenly come f flashing back and giving <laughs> the song to Tracy and be like, hey, would this go on Rocky's playlist? <laughs> How many AMVs do you think this would sustain? Nico, if you have a question, you're gonna have to retype it. Uh, it's a bit of a struggle to uh, yeah, we scroll can't... up to like you know like yeah, thirty minutes to go uh, in conversations. I love text. We won't be able to find. Yeah, it. YouTube is not friendly towards that kind of thing. Yeah, just please uh, retype. Mm. Don't mind. It's fine. This chat is not so crazy that we won't see stuff. Not like Honeycasts. Where how do you guys even manage to read chat? On those, on those podcasts, Ashley. Uh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> a special talent. Michael is just a chaos lord and uh, manages somehow. I mean, he is able to read quite a bit, but at the same time, I mean, inevitably, you're going to miss some things. Oh, yeah. We, uh, mm -hmm. we miss 99% of things. Oh, God. It's chat is so insane. It's like, I, I kind of envy that, but also I don't, because I do like being able to actively talk to people in almost real time. Yeah, like, on Twitch we try and, like, keep up as much as we can. Mm -hmm. But even then, it's just kind of like, uh... Yeah, that's the sad trade-off of becoming known. It's like, you want, you want there to be people, and you want there to be enough, but, uh... 
but then it can get overwhelming. Look at that light. This, this is looking so cool, Newt. I, I'm really enjoying watching this happen. That's very cool. Laser lights added. Yes, Hankbot. <laughs> do you think they have pets on board this space station? How do you scoop poop on space? When the dog is like, takes a dump. What do you do? I was gonna say, well, cats have clumping litter, but then I was like, wait, but the dry litter then? Yeah. What do you do? Would would the space puppy have to wear a doggy diaper? I believe yes. Yeah. Because it would try to, like, go over to a corner and lift its leg, and then it would just be a disaster. <laughs> can you Fable teach asking a... the real important question. Yes, can you teach a dog to use a space toilet? Is this the real reason why Laika never came back? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pour one out for the poor girl. Yumi asks, uh, Ashley, out of curiosity, is there any ice cream in the Papa Swirl truck? That That is a good question, honestly. <laughs> is, does uh, Papa Swirl still do ice cream? Uh, yes? You'll see. I don't like the hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley? Is there ice cream? Depends on your definition. <laughs> but... Ashley? Legally, we can't What's call it that. What's in the it, Papa Matt? Swirl? The Papa Swirl. Last time we called it ice Grilk cream, the FDA in? got mad at us. Don't ask where Grilk comes from. Look at this thing. That's very cool, Newt. Oh, it's Spain! The spaceship is going to Minecraft. <laughs> Spin. Got boy house going on back there. Can you hear the boys in the back? I can hear I, I can hear them debating something. Yeah. I think they're watching like about some horror movies right now or something. Oh, fun! I just saw the Suicide Squad. Uh, oh, the new one. How'd you night. like yeah. it? Yeah. Oh my god! It it cleared up my acne and watered my crops. <laughs> I am so amazed that like it's actually good. It's it's like the best DC movie I've watched hands down. Somebody I think somebody said it's like if Deadpool was rated R and uh is allowed it not? to be as Um <laughs> No, I don't think Deadpool is rated R, no. Well, I think it I is PG thirteen. Maybe. But uh basically it is so oh, there's some stylistic violence. Shark Dad. <laughs> uh, Neku Yi Singer uh, is commenting that they wanted to make a has been hotel themed bedroom and that they have a cat named Alistair. Aw, that would be cool. Aww, yeah. Horrible. Deadpool is rated R. Interesting. I, I was thinking that myself. I was like, I saw somebody make that comment. I was like, I thought Deadpool was rated R. Is it just like the other Deadpool that isn't rated R? Is Deadpool 2 rated R? I could have swore both of them were rated R. Yeah, I don't know. It was the comment was just off. But I'll say that this is more visceral than either Deadpool. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> it is very funny. Oh my god. The rat is so good. His name is Sebastian, and he wants to give you a pretty leaf. <laughs> oh my god. I, I was just like, we were watching it, we were like, we need to give Teddy, that's uh, Ash's uh, little brown rat, we have to give Teddy like a little backpack like Sebastian. The rat is so good. If 
Again, I was on the fence about watching it. I still haven't watched it yet, but I was on the fence about like whether it was actually good or not. Yeah, um, no, it's it's good. And it's, I, it's beautiful, in fact. The thing that yeah. made me uh, believe that it was good was when my old ex-classmates from film school were talking about how bad it was and how much they hated it. I was <laughs> like, oh, if my old pretentious film school classmates hated it, it probably is good. Yeah, if you're pretentious, you won't like it. Um, it is not a serious movie, but Suicide Squad itself was never intended to be. It feels like truly a comic book movie. Like, exactly as silly and fun as comic books tend to be. You know, with like a fun ensemble cast. And uh, just like, just fun personalities bouncing off of each other in goofy ways and fun dialogue. It's, it's like... Um, it's directed by James Gunn. It's like what Joss Whedon wishes he could have done. Hmm. Taika Waititi shows up in it <laughs> as the rat catcher. <laughs> yeah, it's just sort of a bit part, but it's still delightful to see Taika Waititi at any point. It it has it's it's also just a freaking beautiful movie. Like just watching it is fun. Like, even if you hated everything else somehow, visually it's spectacular. It's super colorful. I think Ash compared it to, like, Birds of Prey. Or okay. what the, I still need to see Birds yeah. of Prey as well. I have not, I've not seen it either, so I can't confirm or deny how accurate that is. But it's, it feels like what the first Suicide Squad movie wanted to be and failed. <laughs> what they were trying to do and did a very bad job of and by <laughs> what they were trying to do i mean whatever warner was attempting to morph the project into after the trailer was better received than the the movie in testing this year oh my goodness alex mike says have you guys seen that the actor for polka dot man got a cat during filming and the costume guy made a polka dot outfit for the cat that's that's beautiful oh Uh, Neku Yu Singer is asking uh, if they can have permission to send you a fan gift to you and Michael, apparently. I mean, yeah, go for it. My DMs on Twitter are open. Do you have, like, a P.O. box? Oh, GIF or GIFT? I don't, I, GIFT. Not a GIF. GIF. Oh, I don't have a P.O. box open currently. Um, keep an eye on my Twitter. I might open one. Soon, I didn't, like, want to open a P.O. box while I lived where I'm currently at because I thought I was going to be moving soon. Uh, but with everything, uh, with that is held up with attorneys, sadly, at the moment, uh, I might have to open a P.O. box up again because it's been so long and I don't, and I'm pretty sure we're going to be here for a lot longer. Aww. Well, you're always welcome to come down and visit. I would enjoy that. Yeah. I don't know what Black Magic Newt's working now, but I'm very. Are, are you making like the jets? Uh, yes. Neat. So the black or is going to be set to transparent, it. I assume. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Raced and McKenzie asks, what is the worst movie you've ever seen that almost broke you? Ooh. Uh, hmm. I mean, there's so many different ways a movie can be bad. Like, broke me, like, laughing, or broke me, like, I want to leave, or broke me, like, gave me a headache, or broke me, like, I can't believe that this, this movie is, that this exists. I mean, the worst movie like that that I've ever seen in theaters was by far Cats. <laughs> cats is pretty rough. See, I, think, I, I would at least I think sit the all most the way boring. Cats. Yeah. I think the most boring thing I've ever seen in movies is like that. I don't even remember the name. That's how boring it was. It was this movie about aliens taking over L.A. and like a bunch of like military dudes had to fucking kill the aliens so too generic to remember right like it was so generic and so boring 
Cowboys versus Aliens was also surprisingly boring to me. Oh, God, mm. I forgot that existed. Yeah, I saw that in theaters, too, and I was like, eh. There's only one film that I've walked out of theaters on, and that was Master of Disguise. <laughs> oh, no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Me, like me, and my grandfather saw that together in theaters, and we were like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna go to go to a movie together. It'd be real fun." And just, just, we were both suffering through the film, like, and and like sitting through it just because we were like thinking that the other person must be enjoying themselves. Until I turned to my grandpa and I'm like, C "Can we go?" And he's like, "Oh yes, please." <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God you said it first. Yes. <laughs> just try to be nice, and I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to sit here anymore. I don't want to sit here in this theater. <laughs> oh man, oh god, I think the other it, bad theater experience movie. It's not the worst movie I've ever seen, but it's definitely one of the poorer theater experiences I had. Was uh, uh, what, what was it called? Wolverine Origins film. With the bad oh, Deadpool, God. like Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool. Oh yeah, that oh. movie sucked. The movie is just offensive to me, and I I was watching in theaters. It was already a bad movie, but then on top of that, the theater was jank as fuck, and like the <laughs> there'd be like tearing in the th frame, basically, where like part of the frame was like not in the right spot. And then, like, Aww. the sound kept going in and out, and, and just, oh god, it was out of focus, and it was such a bad experience that we demanded our money back. Jesus. I was just like, not only is this a bad movie, but it's not even presented right, so you took a bad movie and made it worse. I, I hate this. I want my money I wanna, back. I want to find out whose idea the movie it was. Had a, the movie had a pause in the middle of it as they fixed stuff in the whole theater. She's like, oh my god, so miserable. I want to find out whose idea it was to sew Deadpool's mouth shut. Somebody with no love in their heart. It's like, I think Ryan Reynolds made it his mission to make a Deadpool movie because he, he himself was just like so betrayed by that. <laughs> It's like, have you ever made a movie so bad that the actor was like, fuck this, I'll make my own? <laughs> I have to fix that is this. Unique, that's unique levels of bad. The only, the good thing about Wolverine Origins was that it inspired Ryan Reynolds to make, to, to produce a Deadpool movie. There we go. That's interesting looking. Okay, it does fuck up a little bit when it gets over the planet. It it does, <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's just the effect of the fuel exhaust. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> Maybe if you created a gradient map for uh, a gradient ramp for the transparency. Unless this is, does have one, and it's just... Man, Blender was doing that funky sh stuff uh, for the windows. On the car. Or just decided that transparency, what is that? Toomey says, someone who knew it, uh, knew if Deadpool could talk, it would be PG-13. Now, I, I get your joke, but I will actually disagree. I have seen uh, PG Deadpool. There was this uh, Spider-Man cartoon... And in it, they had a they had an iteration of Deadpool that was pretty damn good, and he was indeed suitable for children on TV. Um, Deadpool doesn't actually need to say fuck to be funny, basically. It's actually kind of it was actually pretty well done, and and you can make a joke even out of it. Or like, uh, whoa, that is an interesting rendering error there. <laughs> whoa, what? <laughs> whoa. No, just oh, go, we'll, goodness. Go, we'll go back to the it's nice shooting out here. a black hole. Oh, she's it's got a black hole engine. It's just burning uranium. Yeah. Yeah, De PG Deadpool can be really funny because then you get to joke about the fact that it's PG Deadpool. 
Which is what they did. <laughs> like, he would say, I'm going to destroy you. And Spider-Man was like, you mean kill? You want to kill them? And he's like, no, shh, we can't say that. <laughs> Which Spider-Man cartoon? Uh, the Spectacular Spider-Man, I think? I think it might be on Disney Plus or something. It came out years and years ago. It's, it's not exactly new. Although it is one of the more recent uh, Spider-Man cartoons, so... Moki su Mo uh, Mokiki suggests, Newt, you could try putting the same map into the emission and alpha slot on the shader. Uh. Oh, as far as that goes? <laughs> oh, television static. <laughs> Alex Mike says he has sensor beeps and he hears them and starts to call them out. <laughs> yes, that's how you handle a PG Deadpool. Make the tragedy censored a joke. Oh my god, that's gorgeous. I love it. When you have extra space in your space. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, look at it glow. Weird that it does. Chernobyl per inch would have you created, says Hankbot. <laughs> <laughs> I like that uh, the clouds yeah. move seemingly on only one side of the cube. I'm sure it moves on the other sides as well. It's just the way it looks. It's subtly shifting. It's a little creepy. Look at it go. It's like, ah, uh, Ever so slightly disorienting. Like, like it's rotating... But not. Forget the flat earth theory. I believe in square earth. Cube earth. Let's go. <laughs> so if we... <laughs> Disc shape earth is not interesting enough. Let's go flat earth, but it is three dimensional. <laughs> Cylinder Earth. <laughs> Apparently, a Taurus shaped planet is in fact possible. So you could get a donut Earth. It's just Yo. really, really fragile. But there, I think there's like a theory that, um, quite possibly, like, extremely early on in Earth's history, and by, by, Extremely early on, I mean, like, the sun itself was still forming even levels of early. Um, that Earth might have existed as a Taurus? Briefly. And by Earth, I mean, uh, plasma rock. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't last for very long, though, because it takes only one minor instability for the whole thing to start to coalesce into a sphere. But, yeah, there's some interesting theories about that being actually a, a possible step in Earth's evolution. But it would it would be really cool, though, if we was Donut Earth. Can you imagine being on Donut Earth and you'd look up in the sky and there's more Earth? That would be so fucking buck wild. It would be so weird. Imagine not just that, but there'd be like a moon in the middle. Ooh. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> Newt, can you make the cube a donut instead? I just heard Michael scream in the other room, and then I realized that that's not news. What you were saying earlier is like, Michael's true persona is actually a parrot. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's why we get along. <laughs> He's just a bird. Kobe cat, I mean, did, but make it a bird. I mean, he did originally want to be an owl. Those are owls, quiet. The whole point of owls is they're quiet. I, I don't get screech owl. You, sure, maybe, but but they're quiet most of the time. <laughs> owl would be much too quiet. 
You want me to do a Kobe cat, but it's a parrot? Yes. <laughs> I can do that. I can definitely do that. What are you thinking, cockatoo? It's just a teal cockatoo? Hmm. Yeah, cockatoos are kind of the big dumb babies of parrots, at least they're, to my knowledge. They're emotional and fluffy, and they scream yeah. when they want cuddle. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can pull that off. I'll do Kofi Cat. <laughs> He's a cockatoo. <laughs> Give me, give me a Kobe Cat reference real quick. Throw it in yeah, my DMs. Yum, yeah. Let's see, I'll do oh, it during yum, the stream. Yum, yum. Yeah. Uh, Hankbot, as far as in the modeling program, the ship is only four meters in length. Uh, realistically, if I had to guess... No, it's probably 100 meters long, maybe two. I think he wouldn't just be any cockatoo, be a gala, because those are apparently like the foolish cockatoos. They're the goofy Aww. ones. Yeah. They're the ones that you've seen like uh, videos of like hanging off of power lines and just like spinning. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> They're like pink and gray. They're really interesting looking. Thanks. Also true. Ship's not that big. Donut Earth is just very far away. <laughs> I'll show you a picture of a gala. Here in voice chat. This is a gala. I think they have another name that's pretty goofy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're very cute. You know, cockatoos are lovely creatures. Terrible pets. <laughs> it's like, I love parrots to pieces, and I would not have a cockatoo. Although, if I were to have a cockatoo, maybe a gala. But they're just, they're so... They're such emotional creatures that they, like, will just straight up hurt themselves if they're not provided with precisely the kind of care that they require. They're intensely social. So, like, if you, if you like, leave for too long out of the house, they'll be very, very, very upset. They're saying put the lacquer cube in the middle of the donut. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Chaos be happening here. <laughs> Philip Esculon uh, says, as a parrot level uh, lover, I love budgies. Yes, budgies are very sweet. That's another parrot I recommend to people when they're like, I want a parrot. I'm like, first do your research uh, and then look into everything that can go horribly, horribly wrong. If you're still game for that, then sure, maybe consider a parrot. And then I recommend them cockatiels and budgery guards because they're uh, they're not just the easier ones to care for, uh, but also they're easier to rehome if something goes wrong. And they don't live forever. They they live to about twenty, between like ten to twenty years. That would be one of the things that would really worry me if I ever got a bird. It's just like, it's gonna outlive me for sure. What do I do? You have to put it in your will. <laughs> I like this uh, donut rotating around lack of cube. <laughs> so I think I'll do a lack of cube rotating. <laughs> Give the cube a wood texture. Yeah. I, I will in a second. I will in a second. <laughs> Uh, 
And there should just be like stray shipping containers floating around in space that no one can <laughs> Can they be pancakes? <laughs> space cake. Wait, no, space cakes are something else. I think this is shaping up to well being something absolutely chaotic uh, and silly. <laughs> it, it came out kind of kind of. It's on brand. It looks. You pretty, did good. Pretty great. Yes, I love it. It's it's very dramatic. I like it. <laughs> Let me pull up one of my wood textures. There we go. I'll share my screen just so you can see how this is going. Although the chat won't see it, but once it's once it's done, then if Newt feels like it, he can share it. Oh yeah, I'd be happy to. Okay. For folks curious, I just went ahead and downloaded a 4K wood texture. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I believe that's what they had, uh, that one company did, in fact. Uh, although yeah. I don't think they could spring for 4K. They went for about uh, 72 DPI, you know, 200 by 200 pixels, maybe. Generously. <laughs> Sorry if you guys could hear that I have food delivery. <laughs> Show no up. worries. Oh, no, you are all good. Should I put the cockatoo in the, in the same outfit? Yes. <laughs> no, actually, put put the cockatoo in a Taco Bell hoodie. <laughs> What's a ta Give me a Taco Bell hoodie. I want to know what you're talking about. Precisely. Uh, just a hoodie with a Taco Bell logo on it. Oh. <laughs> Why is that what he's wearing today? <laughs> That's all he. That's basically Michael's fashion sense. Does either that or does Baja Mike Blatt do the laundry? <laughs> I'm struggling not to give him Kaique proportions, but the thing with Kaiques is they just have cartoon bird proportions. <laughs> they just are like th four heads tall. <laughs> can tell how much time I've spent with birds over people because I can just like shit out a parrot so much more readily than if you <laughs> ask me to draw a person. I mean, hey, I can't draw birds at all, so like... Train. Our my roommate's cat train has jumped up onto the desk and is just attacking everything. Aw. Train, get down.
There we go. <laughs> Get another picture of a gala. <laughs> Perfect. Newt, it's beautiful. That this is a is... very quickly spinning box. <laughs> actually, wait, let me... You see, here's the sad thing, Newt. It still looks more like what we actually requested than what they presented with us. There's a clear look... indication of a lid. We didn't have one. Somehow that still looks nicer. It does. It does actually look nicer. Than... Oh, they were so fired. Uh, the the shot glass boxes we have currently are so so much better. Okay, did you send me the Taco Bell hoodie? Like, is it, it just has the Taco Bell logo on it? You said. Yeah, it's just like a purple hoodie with the Taco Bell like bell on the front. Purple. Okay, got it. A particular shade of purple? Can you which which purple? Uh, is just it the Taco, Taco Bell, Bell purple. purple? Yeah, there's okay. a Taco Bell purple. Got it. How in God's name is he not... Dead? I don't know. No, not dead. Well, <laughs> Sponsored? <laughs> no. How, how is he not sponsored by... <laughs> He's Bell sponsored Bell? by Mountain Dew. R oh, really? is he? What? Oh, yeah, you guys didn't know. Mountain Dew no. sends Michael, like, gift boxes every now and again. and oh, like Jesus. And gives him guidelines on, like, how to tweet about it. Oh uh, my god. <laughs> and he gets Mountain Dew in return. He just gets lots of Mountain Dew. I feel for his dentist. <laughs> what dentist? You might want to take him to a dentist. <laughs> Wrangle him into the car. Tell him you're going to tell <laughs> I was about to say, tell him we're going to the park. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. Uh, Let's do. Under. I I sincerely, <laughs> he, I sincerely hope he does take care of himself though. Oh no, he is like religious with brushing and flossing his teeth. Good. Oh thank God. My brother used to have quite the sweet tooth, and he had several cavities growing up. It was like oh. In fact, like, I was, uh, one of the reasons why I am just so insistent on brushing my teeth was that I was like, I don't want cavities. Please, no. Fair. <laughs> Absolutely fair. Yeah. I'm gonna just put the bell and not the Taco Bell on here, because, uh, if this gets posted, I don't want it to actually be an advertisement for Taco Bell. They can pay me. <laughs> Probably wise. Is there a pocket in the front? Uh, I usually don't draw one, but there can be. I mean, okay. Clip Studio really needs to add, like, a warp function. Like, a proper warp brush mesh thing. Yeah, it really That'd be does. nice. Michael's fursona's, like, outfits just change every time I draw them. I can't be bothered to remember. Michael's an agent of chaos. Nothing's consistent. It just means he's a real boy. <laughs> what I should draw Michael in more often is his adopt-a-cat shirt that just has a screaming possum on it. Okay, I'm gonna erase the Taco Bell part of this and just keep the bell. I'll give it a little pocket just because that's cute. You can apparently get hoodies for parrots. And oh. I actually, I tried to put one on Isaac, uh, my female uh, yellow thigh, or also called a white belly. Mm -hmm. And uh, she did not like it. <laughs> she basically <laughs> shut down. She just kind of like... Uh, Wait, no, I put it on Enzo. That's right. That's my black-headed one. I put it on Enzo, and she just shut down. She just kind of, like, stopped moving and just started leaning away from the hoodie part. The hood part of the hoodie. <laughs> Until she was, like, entirely upside down and deactivated. And I was like, all right, I, I can't leave this on you. It's just mean. Apparently, the, the advice is that you just put them on it, put it on them until they, you know, just deal with it. But I was like, uh... 
I this feels mean. I can't. As cute as it is, I can't do this to you. I'll give him feather, feather fingers. What do you think? Should I give him like actual bird hands, bird wings, or like feather fingers? Mm, I I'd say feather really fingers. Yeah. Although it would be pretty entertaining. <laughs> Michael, but he just does everything with his feet instead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he did kick a good hole in the wall with those feet, so... This is ne- we're never gonna let him let that one down. <laughs> that has been I'm fixed, never right? letting No! Uh, it has not been fixed, because I'm not fixing it. I'm leaving that to him, and that means it's never gonna be fixed. I just love- he was like, I watched a video, it's fine, guys. And it's like, is it? I didn't guys, kick the hole. I, I didn't kick the hole in the wall. I'm not fixing the hole in the wall. Didn't him and Dave like went to the the hardware store for materials yes, to and fix they, it, and they came back with a barbecue and the wrong color of paint. <laughs> you should now our like... <laughs> now our ceiling now our ceiling is co covered in the wrong color of paint. <laughs> Life in this house is always chaos. I've just come to accept it. Bird looks too neutral. Realistically, it would be hanging from the ceiling and just screaming. <laughs> just... <laughs> just flipping. I love the screaming Michael Bird. I'm just glad you said it first because I was thinking the same thing myself. <laughs> just like. <laughs> Eric Keen, 77 asks So Michael pretty much is Rocky? I don't know how, but yes, that's basically who I cast. <laughs> yeah, Michael's very perfectly cast. He sets fewer fires. I hope. Yeah, no. Dash, dash, our other was... our other roommate sets the fires. <laughs> Jacob? Uh-huh. <laughs> that Jacob poor set a toaster. Fire? Oh, oh yeah. my god, what happened to the toaster? <laughs> toaster. Microwave. No <laughs> Michael set one of our pans on fire. Oh no. That's dangerous. But so two out of three fires are Jacob. The moral of the story is my house is always on fire, be it wildfires or otherwise. What are you doing now, Newt? Uh, rendering it out. 
Nice. Great. There we go. There is the, uh... The lack of station. <laughs> as, as, as it got a bit chaotic and off track. <laughs> <laughs> Beauteous. That is some high quality desktop art there. <laughs> if folks would like, the full animation will be on Twitter uh, in an hour or so when this is done rendering. <laughs> Nice job. Is there anything else you want to show? You think you want to make a cake? Um, fuck the cake. We completely forgot about <laughs> the cake. We're gonna make a cake planet. Yeah. Yeah. And if anyone has questions about three D stuff, I guess probably now would be a good time to ask. Uh, yes. Yes. I don't know, dude. If you're mm -hmm. up to answering. I absolutely am. Okay. Also, as a reminder, um, this is partly to help fund uh, some medical bills for for newt so if you uh want to throw a little love and appreciation his way his kofi link is in the corner there would be greatly appreciated yes please miss the newt <laughs> he needs moisture help keep him sticky He needs to be slimy enough to hit all the keys well. Otherwise, he'll just stick to them. Ew. <laughs> now the planet just looks moldy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! <laughs> it's a moldy donut. It's just old. We're taking the, the Blender donut tutorial time. quite far. <laughs> um, so I've never actually made a donut in Blender. Oh my goodness. Like, I, then, I never, then we don't have I, the obstruction of the Blender donut tutorial. This I've is never, unique donut tutorial, folks. <laughs> I've never done the uh the actual like proper Blender donut tutorial uh shenanigans. I do have plans for one that I want to do, and it's something. Uh, we sh we shall see what happens with that. Uh, Lux yeah, or Lux says, "You do sculpting in Blender, or do you do mainly poly modeling?" Uh, usually I do poly modeling in Blender, but I am not against sculpting at all. For example, in the Lackadaisy set, the entire cave system was sculpted. All of the tablecloths were sculpted cloth simulations that were draped over the tables properly. Uh, the Papa Swirl hat on the van is sculpted. All of that jazz. Like, I have a setup for... I can make Blender look like ZBrush, although I also have ZBrush. Mm -hmm. Um... But no, traditionally, I, I stick to polymodeling, but I am not against and know how to sculpt in Blender. You might find different approaches better for different types of things. Like I find uh, sculpting, I mean, there are people who can do it and bless them, but uh, there are people who can sculpt hard edged um, surfaces, but um, I tend to find poly mo poly modeling is better for that. Like hard surface stuff. Just looking at Ashley. Let I got, me had see. to do a good mix between those Kobe cat markings and what actually looks like a gala. Oh, that looks perfect. I love it. Uh, Philip is asking what Cold War era sniper rifle would Ivy use? I, I, that's no, I don't really not not something I've ever so put a lot into. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> but if you have thoughts about it, feel free to like share what you think Ivy would be best equipped with. <laughs> Now all I can imagine is Ivy, like, trying to sound very serious, just saying, I'm strapped. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling out a gun that she can't even hold. Ivy, but with a bazooka. And just saying. She can fire a rifle. She's, she's... <laughs> oh no, that I know. She's but Ivy at... with a bazooka. Yeah, I mean, she's a sport shooter. She's not like, she... Yeah, when in a harrowing situation, she just... I mean, we've seen her with a gun once. It was, yeah, something. She, <laughs> yeah, it was not <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Mostly, she just shot the car up. So, blew out a headlight. You said she does sports shooting, though, right? Yeah, with rifles. Not, I mean, shooting with a handgun in a situation where someone is chasing you is a little, yeah, <laughs> different. Her and Freckle have a shooting contest, though. She takes Freckle to a gun range. It goes very badly. Oh god, what a They have a good time despite that, though. <laughs> terrifying date material that would be. But she could do it, though, considering she, she does sport shooting. Takes him to sport shooting. It's like, let's get a skeet shooting. Cans him with a gun. Uh-oh. She wants to impress her, <laughs> her, her sports shooting friends. <laughs> Ralston says, who is your favorite animator? Uh, on the team, or you mean in, in history? I think probably in general. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I like all of them quite a bit. I really like Inde Andrea Deja quite a bit. Uh, this is a particular way of animating Scar is just so compelling. Mm. She's just a really cool character. Um, Milk, Milk Call is the OG, though, as far as that. That's yeah, he's one of the original guys. Frank Thomas. Like, like all the, the... All the nine old men. Disney, yeah. yeah, those those guys are all really top tier. Glenn Keane is has got, like, a really good flow. Uh... James Baxter is just, you know, is a very charismatic animation style. Got it, uh, James Baxter. Yeah. Uh, uh, brain escaping. Sergio Pablo. Sergio, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I really like how he did Dr. Was... Doppler or this. Doppler, yeah. Yeah. Every time I unmute to try and speak, the boys yell again. <laughs> it's just like my parrots that are like, I, yeah, it's the same screaming. Thing. It is like you know what, but there. we can we can only distantly hear them back there. I think we probably hear them about as well as my parents. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard says... to like pick out a favorite animator because yeah. there's so many amazing ones. Yeah, I, I think true. James Baxter has done most of my favorite pieces of animation. Mm -hmm. Or Glen Keen. I don't know. And then I started thinking about Japanese animators. And I'm like, oh, no, wait. But maybe. So good. It's impossible yeah. to pick one. <laughs> and Infinite Sky mentions Tex Avery, which, yeah, that too. Oh, it's, Tex it's, Avery but it's like it's a whole different work. like type of animation or just different level of cartoon, I guess. Just as an experiment, if I were to ship this suddenly to pink, does it actually read but well, that's interesting looking <laughs> so that needs to be more desat okay i think i had to commit to giving him more colors now to make him actually look like a teal gala not just blue bird Hot Doggo says the fate of Lackadaisy lies in the hands of kids with guns and a tired widow. <laughs> yeah, that, that sums yep. it up. Uh, some disaster children and a grieving, depressed lady. <laughs> what a romp. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ralston says Don Bluth and Walt Disney for me. Uh, 
It's got color jaded on it. I think it does. Infinite Sky says the OG was Windsor McKay, though. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that. Windsor McKay, I mean, just wow. <laughs> Windsor McKay, who was like, who the fuck wants to work like this? <laughs> <laughs> it was just. He's like, people are. I, I think he was given the opportunity to patent uh, animation itself, and he was like, who in their right mind would want to do this? And that's why animation doesn't have like, didn't have a, a patent that was limiting people on whether or not they could do it at all. <laughs> at first. I find that really funny. Disney sweating heavily. <laughs> Hankbot says, I don't know who these people are. They're animating legends. <laughs> Muhammad... Uh, says, what's the best horror movies that you guys have been watching so far? Uh, uh, I haven't seen We watched it. Werewolf Within. I, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I hesitate that to call that like a yeah, really scary it's movie. A, it's horror comedy, I guess. It's more of a comedy than yeah. satire comedy type thing. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen much, much horror lately, although horror is my favorite thing <laughs> to watch um I don't know I, th I thought the last really really strong horror film that I saw was probably Hereditary and that was like what 2018 so <laughs> I was about that to say one, the last like really rough. amazing horror movie I saw was Hereditary as well yeah I liked uh Suspira quite Sus a bit like, oh, yeah. I haven't seen the original but like I saw the remake and it was uh mm. it was really good like that contortionist scene that was, like, so genuinely creepy. Mm. I just was starting to watch... Uh, I was kind of falling asleep um, while I had it on, but I'm, like, desperate to watch something. Just I don't, never have the energy or time to do it, but I was starting to watch um, Brand New Cherry Flavor on Netflix. What's that? Which it's uh, hard to explain. It's, like, got surreal Oh, thank you for the donation, horror. Ghostly. Mm. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, surreal and horror elements, very Lynchian feeling in some ways. Uh, also kind of a little bit, um... A uh, little bit of body horror <laughs> involved. Uh, it's... It's pretty trippy. Uh, and interesting and cool. It's like very, it's like a dark version of... It's like kind of a dark alternate universe version of LA and Hollywood. Um... With, you know, like witchcraft is real and uh, strange things are happening and people are putting hexes on each other and it's, it's pretty cool. I like it. <laughs> it maybe, maybe is like, it's definitely got some monstrous things in it that you could, you could call horror, but it's. maybe defies a uh, strict genre mm. classification, so. There's your cake, Tomb, <laughs> at request. <laughs> nice. Space cake. It's a very special space cake. God, what has this turned into? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our uh, how to blender tutorial. Anyway, <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> That's kind of welcome to the how to blender. First half, how to. Second half, blender? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay. <laughs> what beautiful, beautiful chaos. Mm hmm. I think I got this drawing about done. So. Kind of get that Beautiful. a little bit colored in. Yeah. <laughs> Accurate? Extremely. Are his frames like black? Or you just got normal black frames? Yeah. Okay. 
I like drawing them pink because it annoys him, though. <laughs> gonna have to show the stream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in a second. I'm just giving it a little zhoosh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm ready to pull it up as soon as uh, as soon as you're ready. Sure. Almost done. <laughs> I just wanted to get these frames just a little bit darker. series reference in 1972 a crack commando unit was sent to prison by a military court for a crime they didn't commit these men promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade starting to sound like the a-team yeah I was gonna to the say. los angeles to the los angeles underground needs more lens flare you're right kim it does need more lens flare <laughs> <laughs> need lens flare that jj abrams would be proud of <laughs> Heavily slapped together, but there we go. <laughs> Mike, but he's a bird. I love him. He looks so fluffy. <laughs> he's shaped like a friend. <laughs> Most birds are. This is a trap. Q bird bird sounds. <laughs> there he goes. Screaming. <laughs> okay. Alright, that's what I did with my time. <laughs> Beautiful yeah. contributions all around. <laughs> Ralston McKenzie says, looks like a Rio character. Oh, thank you. Yeah, kind of. Also, thank you again. I haven't actually added up and any numbers or anything. Uh, <laughs> here, I can pull up this. Ghostly Folk uh, said, donated five minutes ago and said, hi, Newt. Can't watch the stream right now due to Wi-Fi by the coast being spotty, but I wanted to wish you the best of luck on your stream. Can't wait to watch it later and learn a thing or two. Smiley face. Well, this is Evie, Philippe. <laughs> okay, and we passed our goal. We passed our goal by about $50. Hey! Yeah! Hey, thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you so much, you everyone. It. Appreciate it. I don't have to talk to debt collectors. No. <laughs> Yay, thank no debt very collectors. Much. Woo. Yeah, thank thanks, you everyone. very much and for thank you, helping Newt. out, Newt. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you thank for you. everything, buddy. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, if anyone did... No, first off, I do hope <laughs> you took something away from this Blender t tutorial. <laughs> tutorial I'm delighted. I mean... Look um, at that. Had a very good time. This is the render. This is an animation <laughs> of you had a good time. Dot mov. <laughs> um, if you did, you know, learn something. If it did help, uh, would love to see what you make uh, on Twitter. If, if you tag us, please follow our donut tutorial instead. Uh, <laughs> would love would love to see if you make something of similar energy to this. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'd be impressed if you could get even close to this energy. This, this is, there's a lot. This is a lot. There's a lot to take in. There's <laughs> yes. a lot to take in. Yeah. Uh, and What's uh, the ship's name? What was it? The SS Lakatezi? Or, uh, or Longboy? The SS Longboy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and hey, uh, 2D artists, uh, learn to model. It'll help you. Yes. With so many things. Even if you're not animating, even if you're just like 2D illustrator or something. Um, mm -hmm. It can make you so much more flexible to just have basic modeling knowledge. And it can also just assist you so in so many ways in like um, in, in your drawing. So, uh, I mean, if you hate drawing grid lines for perspective, like 
slapping down even some some cubes and boxes for like uh, an environment or something can um, help you avoid having to do that, which has been like just a blessing for me because I hate nothing more than sitting sitting down and drawing perspective grids. So, like I can, but yeah, I, I can't. But why? <laughs> <laughs> why spend the hours to do that when you can not? And you can easily like modify your model as, as needed without doing a bunch of erasing and you know that kind of thing and just yeah make make your life easier by learning a little bit of modeling. But yeah, uh, and actually speaking of to that end, if and when we do a part two of this, which folks let me know if you would want a part two that's maybe a little more structured. Uh... <laughs> then um i'll definitely do like a substantial grease pencil segment uh Ooh. because could you, been a you lot could of... tell people how to do cell shading uh inside of blender and that kind of thing That'd well not cool. just the cell shading stuff i can absolutely do that but um but i've actually been looking into uh, animating in 3d space with 2d uh objects and, and like sketches and stuff ah okay um it's been pretty cool uh, and maybe something around Halloween, we can do things with skeletons. But we shall yes, see. see. Skellies. But, Skeletos. um... Eat some skeleton energy. Part two, all the other commands. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Philip says, which character would be a narcotics dealer and has connections with the Mexican drug cartel? Why are they taking applications? <laughs> <laughs> Mitzi and Asa turn their heads like mm. <laughs> Did somebody say drug cartel? <laughs> God. Sign me up. Pro I mean, prohibition over. Time to move into some new territory. Yeah, I mean pro yeah. alcohol prohibition only lasts until nineteen thirty three. They're gonna have to find a new racket, so Yeah. Right, but um but with that, if uh if no one has any reservations, I I think that's sort of us calling it for yeah. the night. Sure. Wonderful job, Newt. And thank you, everybody, for coming. And have a wonderful mm -hmm. evening. Thank you, everyone, Bye. for being everybody. here. Thank you again for the support. Bye. Everyone, yeah, everyone take care. Bye.